Hey folks, um, welcome to another evening with me, Kalu Aja, on our spaces. We call the Money Spaces. And out here we are talking, of course, money, the economy, and personal finance. How do the topics of the day affect your wallet? That's what we usually talk about. This week I brought in a guest. Uh, he's not here yet. Uh, Obiere Nameka, that's his name. So once, he, once he's in here... I'll get him to hop in and introduce himself. But we have a lot to talk about. You know, we've had the long holidays, so we've had a lot of things that have happened in between then. You know, the CBN board, we've had the ways and means, we've had the CBN investi- the investigator that was appointed by the president You know, to look into the affairs of all the banks. So they've sacked a few bank boards. Uh, should we say they've nationalized a few banks as well? We have the Dagwater refinery starting. You know, we have a lot going on to talk about. So I want to just talk with him to get his his, his view on all this. He's a very, very uh, erudite guy that I respect a lot. And I think he brings a lot to the table. I, I wish he was here so we could just get started because I know lots of people would have a lot of questions. He was also here last week and a few folks wanted to bring him back on a special... Um, so bring him back so we could talk more about his the plan that he talked about with us last week to do with investment in the agricultural space. For January, I'm trying to do this topic around where should you invest. Like, you know, I'm doing, if you had money, where would you invest? The whole idea, of course, being that we have lots of options in Nigeria, but we have high inflation. I think the actual term is stagflation, which is high inflation, high unemployment. The economy is really not, uh, should we say, it's not where we would want it to be. Uh, the dollar exchange rate to Naira, the spread has widened, right? So uh, cost of living in Nigeria has also gone up. Wages have not kept pace with that. There's insecurity. There's low power supply. So there's a lot of things to say this is what's going wrong in Nigeria, right? But usually if you understand economics, you understand that it's when things are really, really bad, when there's blood in the street, that's when there are opportunities for folks to actually make money. And that's the whole idea, that there's always, always, always an opportunity for people to make money in the country, even in Nigeria. And that's the theme that we've been speaking about. Last week, we had the guy from the stock market, um, Ebo, tell us about <clears throat> how to build out a portfolio that would sort of insulate you from inflation and allow you to grow even in Nigeria. So if you weren't here last week, make sure you, look, you get a, a copy of the audio and listen to it. It was very, very packed. And he did give us lots of uh, insight. So let me, since he, I, I guess it's not here, I can run it. I mean, we can have this open for that we always do. Let me run a few things down, you guys, that have been going on in Nigeria. Maybe just joining in, just to, to bring you up to speed. First of all, the ways and means, you know, the, the um, them to, just to, to step back a bit. The last administration printed or had an overdraft ways and means, which is they borrowed from the Central Bank of Nigeria about $23 trillion. That's a low number. $23 trillion is more than that. And as they were leaving office, they got the National Assembly to pass bonds. And those bonds more or less um, sort of captured that illegality because the borrowing and the printing was illegal. They can only borrow 5%. So now they got the, Central, the National Assembly to pass a bill that allowed them to convert those legal borrowings into bonds to make it legal and of course then attach a cost to the government, right? So they securitize. Last month, I think this month, we now had the president ask for an extra seven, seven, I don't know how, how much is this. He asked for an extra amount to be securitized as well. Which means he's also going to do the exact same thing in the past administration date. He's also going to borrow from the Central Bank of Nigeria. But he's doing it in this case, he's doing it legally because he's saying the Central Bank can borrow him 5% or is it 15% according to their rules. So that's what we were last week, right? So we're back to this excessive borrowing to fund the budget. The budget is going to be funded wholly by independent revenues, which means it's not even going to be funded by oil sales. If you look at the budget carefully, it's not going to be funded by oil, so it's going to be funded by independent revenues. And we're back to that in Nigeria, uh, as it were. We also had the CBN board, it's gone. They have been investigated to, to say, hey, why did you guys allow the past governor to print all that money? And that's where we were uh, last week, that the, there's heat 
on the on the board there's heat obviously he's still in jail or is in the, under detention the past CBI governor over his printing and right now we're boring the same amount of money down the line so essentially that's where we find ourselves so he's just joining now Leslie what's on your mind before my guest joins him Leslie go ahead let me just grab you real quick yeah thanks so much for this one this, this space you just feel you missed um, a lot thank you in terms of uh, updates so keep it up now uh, i just want to comment by starting with um, why we are in this position you know so much under the last administration they tend to have a um, mortgage the food shop in nigeria mm. and has put us in an excessive debt yeah and that's i doubt if there is Anything we can do in the short term now that can actually reduce the level of inflation, mm-hmm. you know, and the 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 CBN waiter means that um, we got ourselves into in the last administration. I was believing that okay. I was thinking that when this administration comes on board, there, there's going to be a reduction in such um, you know kind of executive involvement in the affairs of the CBN. You know, fundamentally, there is a, is a, 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 a different, a, a, a demarcation between the monetary policy and the physical policy authority. But the overbearing influence of the government, either government or the central bank, has made it very difficult for whoever is appointed at any time to be, you know, exonerated in this oh. kind of situation, our economic quagmire, we have found ourselves. So it's an institutional issue that needs to be fundamentally resolved. Now, on the area of inflation, you know, um, the inflation, chunk of inflation is, you know, on the food and supply, food stuff and all of that. And um, uh, even when you think, okay, this is harvest period, um, I sent a friend of mine to find to make an inquiry into how much they sell bushels in um, of rice. You know, yeah, you know, just imagine he, right inside the farm, three bags of rice goes for one hundred and forty three thousand. Right inside the farm, in the heart of harvest period. Now, and the harvest period will not last because. Our farm products are not usually a large quantity, given our board of production. Now, the government has pretentiously made us believe that um, the budget, you know, will will go well. I don't know if there is a way to get blood from somebody who is anemic. The economy is anemic, and um, we the basic source of revenue is going to be from, you know the the crude oil sales and the last administration even went ahead to do a crude oil deal that pushed the you know like a transaction a three years upfront transaction meaning that the more we produce the more we use in servicing the the, the agreement that the last administration mm. you know enters that for me what a lot of people don't even really know is a bigger issue that will affect the you know the implementation of the budget. I hear you. But, you know. Yeah, let's. So, I hear you. It's it, like you yeah. said, Leslie. It's we've gotten ourselves into like a, a spiral that we might not be able to get out of easily because if we are borrowed twenty three trillion, that puts a weight on whoever is the next president, right? The next president has to count out like it on your balance sheet. So that's why we're bringing in people like Doctor or, or Biarri to basically come in and talk to us. I want to just talk to him top down you know go from the economy you know what's happening with the nigerian economy i want to ask him about the nigerian economy they want to now ask him about okay what are the opportunities in this economy for a guy you know that's someone that's just essentially listening in and wants to know where to invest money uh so um i have him here um my good friend uh, nameka obiere please unmute I want you to introduce yourself, who you are, so as folks who know who you are, then of course we, are, we can then start to ask you those questions. Go ahead, sir. Okay, um, good evening, um, gents and ladies. Um, I am Nemeko Nyeka of Yerimi. I'm an investment banking executive, oil trader, and farmer. 
And uh, I have over 24 years postgraduate experience as an investment banker. I'm um, having transversed over nine top financial institutions in Nigeria and they participated directly and actively in capital raising of over three billion dollars into Nigeria and other South Saharan African spaces. I currently run a boutique investment bank known as Taros Capital and sit on the board of the holding company, the Taros Holding. We have vast interest in oil and gas and uh, luxury goods. Um, real estate and then our flagship is the investment banking business and the oil and gas business we have one of the biggest petroleum depot in the whole of the oko uh, axis and we are also into lubricant uh, production and uh like i said um i have advised governments both within and outside nigeria participated actively on the privatization program of the federal government of Nigeria, both on the buy and the sell side, um, act as a representative to some of the biggest hedge funds outside Nigeria. Basically, what we do for them is to provide guidance for their investment forays into Southern Africa. We provide them what we call due diligence, both on the technical, financial, and the legal side. We bring in parties to help them look at where the investment opportunities are in Africa and uh, how they can play within this space in order not to get their fingers burnt. Some of these funds, like I made people to understand, we have over $10 trillion out there, funds that are not within the former financial space, family companies and other sources that are looking to where they can play to provide good returns while ensuring security of their funds. Our foray into Agri was in 2006. I've participated in funding some of some major Agri projects. I was part of the team that did Fadama, the Israeli intervention in the north. I also work with a group known as Elsmed Israel. Elsmed Israel is one of the biggest dairy producers in Kibbutz in Israel. So basically, we're looking at opportunities on the agri sector, which motivated us to, okay, let us even play as local players, because you cannot just bring people to come in. In fact, one of the things that stimulated our discussion with them was when these issues of headers, farmers clash got to a crescendo, when people were talking about about grazing route or non-grazing route. Those guys, you know, we got talking to them and we discovered that even the level of dairy production in Nigeria is nothing compared to what happens in Israel. We are cows that are kept in air-conditioned environment and we are yield per cow of milk per annum moves from about 20 to 60 liters, you know, on an average. Whereas in Nigeria, yeah, it's very, very low. Mm. So we talked about how we can work with them to set up dairy centers with the Southeast in focus. Imo was our actual focus. Our plan was to work with the, the, the most important the third biggest rancher in Nigeria is Animo Man, G National Ranch. Our plan then was to work with them. He, 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 his plant was in his his shop was in Derek and uh, Changrai area in Kan before he moved to Shagamu now because of the issues of rising security in the north. Then, so our plan then was to work with them, set up dairy centers across the three zones in Imo State. Started out with about um, 5,000 breeding cows in every of the zones. The plan was in the next five years from that time to take care of all the meat and the dairy needs of those that live within the Southeast region. So in 2006, we set up what we know as Southeast Farms and Agricultural Processing Company Limited. Our desire, our vision was to intervene in a space where the states and local government area were supposed to provide direction and which they failed to do. Our strongest motivation was looking at what Dr. Michael Opera did in six years. For most of us, we do not understand. The most profitable company in the Jazz Stock Exchange that have consistently paid dividends over the last 21 years, non-break, is Okomo and Presco. And Okomo and Presco, what do they do? They are into the palm oil space. Go and look at their turnover. Go and look at what they've done. And interestingly, both Okomo and Presco Palm Plantation that they inherited 
under the privatization arrangement was built by your Basanjo and Gowon between 1972 to 1979. In fact, the other palm, you know, where in Imo State or Haji was built by the federal government of Nigeria under Gowon. The only agro project and park that we have built that was not by the military was the one that Michael Obara did. The one they call the Iri settlement that cross crisscrossed Abia, Ebony, and the current Aquaibom state. It's, it's still standing there. It's a 4,300 hectares of palm estate. Those that lived then, I met an old man that told me so that the place used to have schools. If you go there, you still see the old concrete roads that they did there. That there used to be schools there, hospitals there. That sometimes, that there was a time he stayed in a resettlement for one year without going outside that place. Everything they did was there. That was the kind of vision. Even the ones in our hand, we were done by Michael, but that was the kind of vision the guy had. Mm. And it was no skyrocket science. You looked at the numbers, you will see clearly that we have visionless people who are not ready to work, and so we decided to go into it. But Doc. Because after 1965, Michael Obara driving the Eastern economy with the working with the Western economy because they were actually the palm belt. They were controlling 45% of the global crude palm oil market then. That market today is sized and valued at over $72 billion, controlled its 5% by Indonesia and Malaysia. If Nigeria had maintained control of that sector, with them for 5%, today we'll be exporting nothing less than $38 billion worth of crude palm oil, which is even more lucrative than the fossil fuel. The yeah, Malaysia and Indonesians came here 80 years ago, picked our settlements and modified it. So, Today, we talk about the Malaysian Tenera and the Super Gene and the, all the Dura species. They were a modification of what they took from here in Nigeria to research and development. And Doc, As Doc, today, Doc, I want to... Yeah? Doc, I, I want, I want to, I want to, because I know you have, you are packed and you have a lot to deliver. I want to moderate okay, yeah. you so that I can, we can okay. capture the best from you, right? Again, just, okay. just to c cap what you're saying, I, I, I thought that story was, was urban myth that the Indonesians came here to take our palm. I did my research and, it, and it's true. They actually came mm -hmm. here. The palm was brought from Brazil to Nigeria. It grew. Yeah. And then the mm -hmm. Dutch, the Dutch came from from Indi back then it was the Dutch Indies. They came to Nigeria and took the palm seedlings to Mal to Malaysia and Indonesia, which then were not a country, and it has grown. And today the cr the palm oil from Indonesia makes more dollar revenues than the crude oil from Nigeria. I mean, it's telling. Yes. But Doc, yes. Let, I want to take you up on let just t take. Well, I am I, I I look at Nigerian economy. Let's say I'm an investor. Mm. I see inflation. I see, but I mm. see 200 million market. Mm. I see, mm. I see insecurity, but I see mm. oil and gas. I see this mm. country has got gold. They have clean water mm. in the streams, freshwater streams. They have vegetation, arable land. You throw mango on the floor, it grows. There is no earthquake, no natural disaster. There is no mineral, not in Nigeria. Columbine, tin, gold, uranium. I see all this. Why has Nigeria not gone from what I see to wealth creation? Why are Nigerians today at the same level of wealth, that's per capita wealth, as they were in the 1960s? Why is this so? Okay, um, uh, uh, Carlo, the issue we have is a structural issue that has to do with the deformities in the foundation of Nigeria. Like I always say, there is no country that is as blessed as Nigeria in terms of natural resources. This is the only country in the whole world where you have the right combination of rainfall, sunshine, and have the highest form of water tributaries across the land in Nigeria that can easily allow you to do irrigation. I'll give you an example. Egypt is 95% desert. Egypt is only depending on the Nile to operate and to irrigate most of their dry land. Yet, if you look at the numbers, Egypt is churning out. It will amaze you what Egypt is doing. In terms of rice production, look at, look, look at the example. I, I'm coming to answer your question. Look at the example the issue of rice. For eight years, Buhari and his goons keep, kept on playing politics by closing the border. We are, they were still smuggling the rice from Niger and other places. 
For 80 years, we wasted our time playing politics. CBN wasted 1.2 trillion naira doing rice intervention. As of today, we consume about 7.5 million tons of rice. But what we produce is less than 4 million tons. And you begin to ask, what is the skyrocket science in rice production? Rice is one food crop that you can cultivate three times in a year. In fact, minimum two times in a year. Because the rice cycle is about six um, 150 to 180 days. Interestingly, we've heard stories of people that did rice farms that were over flooded. Flooding came in. And why did flooding come in? Flooding came in because we refused to dredge our waterways, we refused to desilt, and we refused to do shoreline embankment. There is no river in Nigeria today, both Niger and Benue, that is as um, um, uh, that has the kind of depth and currency as the Nile. Yet, even Egypt stays on a, a on a more um, how will I call it in a, a lower landscape than Nigeria. Yet, you hardly hear the issue of flooding in those areas because they took our time to they dispute, they dredge, and they do shoreline embankment for all their settlements where they did irrigation. So, look at Nigeria. To cover the supply gap of rice in Nigeria, we only take one year. One, one year. One year. One year. One year. You don't even need more than one year. One year. One year of scientific integration working together between the federal government and the state government. What do we need to cultivate? We just need out of the sixty-four million hectares of arable land mass in Nigeria, we need less than one million hectares to cultivate. Hmm. We have clusters of land where we have the rice belt from Ebony to Abia to Enugu to Anambra, even part of Imo State like Etiti, Hitubaba, um, uh, they are all rice belt. What we do? Very simple. We have a demographic arrangement that even allows us to do these things. 8,809 electoral wards. Remember there was a time the federal government muted the idea of importing 10,000 tractors through the federal ministry of finance. They, they wanted to borrow $1.2 billion to do it. And uh, it was a very simple I said, okay, why do you want to go and uh, buy tractors? Go to, if you go to every any ministry of agriculture in Nigeria today, you will see abandoned tractors that were purchased through the same shabby arrangement. Mm. I said, okay, under a price, because let me tell you, Carlo, one of the problems we have is the structure. And the structure is what breeds insecurity. And because of insecurity, many people that have ideas of what to do cannot go into it. Now, what, how do you bridge this gap? Out of the 8,000, it was electoral wards. Look at the rice belts. Pick out clusters. It can be clusters of 40 hectares. Clusters of 50 hectares. Clusters of 100 hectares. Government does not need to even bring money. There are existing rice farmers. Attached to them, extension officers. You can bring... So, okay, a cluster of about... Of about 100, 40 hectares each. Which is about 40, 4,000 hectares of land. Attach each cluster. Basic bulldozer to enable them to clear and stomp. Basic tractor to enable them to reach and to harrow. Basic grader to enable them to do the internal agri-crude to enable them to evacuate this. And then harvesters and irrigation equipment and do massive borehole for them to enable them to irrigate. You can even solar power it. And then in this cluster of 3,500 or 400 hectares, that has because if you have this equipment, they can easily uh, cultivate this land at even a cheaper cost of about forty thousand naira per hectare. Mm. And the, the, this equipment will be made under a private partnership. The person who is going to manage this equipment will be collecting rentals from them. So it's not a case of government. If it repair, if it spoils, it will pay. And over time, you will repay the money used to buy this equipment because there, is, there are off the cars for that equipment and off the cars need that equipment to make their um, agri mechanized. Provide them with the rice seedlings, the gary species that Egypt is using, which has demonstrated under the federal program to grow so much in Nigeria. 
it does about nine tons per hectare. Mm. Carlo, most of the rice mills in Nigeria that are the lower, the small cottage ones, 10 tons, 15 tons, are actually fabricated here in Nigeria. The only thing that are imported are actually most of the motors. Mm. We can set up cottage processing factories, even the stoners here that can process. Carlo, in a year, Cultivating 500,000 hectares of new land under such clusters. Setting up cottage factories under such arrangement. That is private sector driven. Government providing a kind of a, a, a community board that does take or pay guarantees. Just like we had the produce board of the Eastern Nigeria, produce board of the Western Nigeria. Carlo, in one year, we will produce enough rice to cover the supply gap in Nigeria. And do you know why this cluster is very important? In that cluster of 4,000 4, 4, uh, 4, hectares, you will have agro-rangers attached to them. Agro even if the agro-rangers are using pump-action rifle, 25 of them in every cluster, or 50 of them in every cluster, the payment of those agro will come from the proceed of the cluster. So that's security you're talking about now? Security! Not paid by government. Security that is living there, there is, a, there is a shelter for them where they live. They patrol the clusters 24 7. They have drones. Can we, we've done the numbers on this. But what is just needed is not the federal government, it's the state government oh. and the local governments providing, you know, they control the land. Providing the regulation, the incentive, that is what LS is trying to do in Nigeria State. The, 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 the bill that will set up the uh, commodity budget, it's almost ready, is being drafted. Every local government area will have their own. You set these guys up in cooperatives, whatever you produce is purchased. It will shock you to note that across the, do you know that in Imo State today, most people don't know. We have 6,000 hectares of latex rubber plantation lying waste in Yihye. The latex rubber industry is a $25 billion industry. Taiwan controls almost about 10%, 20% of that market. Mm. From that Yihye rubber plantation, a hectare of rubber plantation produces about 2,190 uh, kg of wet rubber and 897 of dry rubber. A ton of dry rubber is today selling for $1,400. From that plantation alone, the most state government can make at least $6 million annually, employing 6,000 youths. So we so, gave them a yes. D doctor, why are the states not doing this? Because you said it's not the federal, it's the states. So are you saying all 36 states do not know what you're saying? That all through Buhari years, same party, they don't know what you're saying? Carlo, they know. But let me, but they know. Let me check. Carlo, you, are you aware? Go and check. Why do you think that we have, a, a, a CBN gave out 1.2 trillion. Today, 600 billion is in the hole. Those who collected the money have died the money. They are not farmers. The real farmers did not get most of those funds. And even those who got those funds, most half of the money was taken by agents. Because it is something that was done, you know, up, up there. The same thing with the social intervention scheme. They will tell a senator to go and compile names. You go and compile names of those who are party loyalists, who are not even those who require the money. It will shock you. In the United States, there are many doctors that have left who are still collect salaries, who have the passes. That is the kind of thing we have in Nigeria. So basically, why the states are not doing this and local government areas are not looking inward? And that also comes back to the structural deformities and the politics there. Because we run a barbial a physical republic where the powers are so concentrated at the center. So everybody's after collect fact, collect jack, share the money. After all, the, 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 the parameters for sharing the money from Kudoy is population and land size. Mm. It is not by what you contribute. If we had a physical arrangement like we had in 1966, where regions, whatever you produce, keep 50 for yourself. 
bring that to the center for others who are less privileged, the beggars who don't want to work, to take share, and then give to the federal government. People will be motivated now to look inward because it is what you will bake that you will chop. You will not fold your arms and then cook up your population and landmass and wait for the crude oil from that to come and feed you. That is why we are where we are today. That is why, like you rightly pointed out, we have experienced stunted growth from 1970 till now. Go and check. The only time we had veritable, provable growth was between 1960 to 1966. In fact, it was a record that the economy of the old eastern Nigeria was the fastest growing in the whole of the Commonwealth growing at the rate of 9% per annum. The Eastern police was so efficient and more professional than the Federal police. And then when the UN wanted to make peace in Congo Democratic Republic, they solicited for Michael Obama to release some of his officers. So, okay. there was no... You see, this idea of politicians being united in criminality just because of what they will share and what they will eat. Okay, look at the example. The money that we are shared to senators and house of friends for them to go and buy rice. Senators we had got 200 million. House of rep got 100 million. If you aggregate the money these guys collected, which some of them used to buy bag of rice that people have already eaten and already shitted out, it's about 57 billion naira. Carlo, if you hand 57 billion naira over to me now, I will create. 38,000 hectares of new Tenera palm plantation in the south, or 38,000 hectares of new date palm plantation in any part of the north, in clusters of 40 hectares each. Carlo, I will create 190,000 jobs with that money. And each of those clusters, whether in the north or in the east, can easily generate about 1.6 trillion naira annually over the next 70 years after five years of gestation period. So, 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 Doc, you, you say it's, is it, just to be clear, is it because of the fiscal allocation whereby states can get money from oil by just having population? Is that why they have abandoned uh, the wealth in agriculture? Because that's what I believe. I believe that the pyramids in the north, the granite pyramids in the north disappeared because not because of the oil per se, but because they took away the state's ability to get the income tax from the granite farmers in Kano. States could do only tax payee. They only tax payroll. They don't tax income. So is that what you are... They, they took away the incentives. The incentives for people to look in what... See, the average man, let me tell you, the, the average human being always have the tendency to just leisure and enjoy if there is no pressure there. Mm. Can you close your eyes and imagine where we say, okay, today, we have re engineered the physical regime in Nigeria, the resource production and control architecture to be like what we used to have in 1966. Where we say, okay, whatever you collect in your state, keep 50 pay tax in the central port to be shared by others, and then give federal government 20%, and then reduce the responsibilities from port to aviation to road to agri to the regions and units. You know mm. what will happen? Mm. If the man in Beyesa and Delta and Rivers we sell their oil and they keep 50% for themselves, and the man in Niger State is no longer getting as much as he used to get, the man will look in what to see how he will develop his state. Mm. If the man in Lagos State is collecting all the VAT, the man will put incentive in place to attract more businesses in their state. What will happen? This one you have a Kanu man doing his bar, where he will be breaking people's bottle. You will see his bar will disappear. The man will want many other businesses to come and set up in his company, in his country, or in his state. So that he can get enough revenue to take care of his people. Mm. Are you aware that even in the UAE, I I went to UAE one day. There was you know, there was I used to, there was a time I used to travel every quarter. I was representing Nasi by then. We used to go to conferences. I lodged into one hotel. They wouldn't ban you from taking there there's greater areas for alcohol. I opened the fridge, but they have incentive of things they would do to discourage you from drinking alcohol. 
I opened the switch. I saw a thought of Hennessy. Marked on that thought was eighty dollars. <laughs> eighty dollars for Hennessy. <laughs> eighty dollars one thought. <laughs> he said that he was telling you, if you want to satisfy your leisure of drinking, now you must pay. Mm, I see where I see where you're going with this. So, so, in, so, in, so, 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 so let's, there is competition where people are now forced to produce and bake what they eat and feed their children to eat. Mm. All this religious politics, all this nonsense you see in Nigeria, all this security will disappear. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Um, if you were an investor, right? If you are a long-term investor, does Nigeria look like a good investment destination for you? I mean, if you look at it clear-eyed, you know, you're not looking. At, just would you put money in Nigeria? Carlo, there is no country in the whole world that takes the right buses like Nigeria. I give you an example. I met a group in Oman from Oman in 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 in, in Dubai. The guy I met was the third generation. The guy was bragging and telling me how his great grandfathers came to Oman. He's an Indian from India. The man came with about four hundred thousand dollars. There are four thousand dollars, and the man has grown the wealth to about forty million dollars. And he was so excited. And what was were they doing? They were drilling boreholes, producing water for people. What, what were they doing? They, were, they come to areas, maybe clusters of um, cities, or communities like an estate. They will provide them with water and everything, and the people will be paid. Not like providing utility. They also do bottled water. The man was suddenly so excited, and he asked, I laughed. And I asked myself, have you heard about the TIG group? I mean, TGI, he said yes. I said, they are Indians, he said yes. I said, these guys... We are in other places. But they came into Nigeria. That was when they blew. From a, an investment of about $500,000, 22 years after, they sold 55% of it to Coca-Cola for $550 million. The man was dazed. <laughs> I said, I, I told him, I said, the kind of opportunities in Nigeria, I said, this thing you was talking about, you, you, you provided water for estates, you sold bottled water. And you made forty million. You created forty million dollars in 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 over sixty years. I said, "Have you heard about Aliko Dangote?" He said, "Yes." I said, "Aliko was what eighty million dollars as at two thousand. Today, where do you think the money came from? I think it's from Nigeria. The opportunities are here, Carlo. We have the numbers. We have the natural incentives. But the major problem we have here, Carlo, is the insecurity, which is." The cost and the corruption, and which is one of the stories. Can I give you an example? I sold my property in Lake Phase One, a property the bank funded for me with 72 million. I paid for that property for over 13 years. I decided this is my agri play. That was where all the monies went. From other monies I got from other investors. About 3.8 million. Carlo, we helped the government to survey their land. I said the government is still owing me about 9.5 million today. The money I gave them to survey the land. Can we got the of oh? Can we bought bulldozer, D8 bulldozer? We brought in two people from horticulture, professionals. We hired them to come and work with us. What was our plan, Carlo? We had 850 hectares of land with C of O. Our plan was every year we will cultivate new 50 to 100 hectares of new palm plantation. 10 hectares of pineapple plantation, 10 hectares of, 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 of the Cavendish banana. Carl, we started. We cleared almost 100 hectares of land. It was very expensive. We prefabricated a factory that we do about 20,000 liters of palm oil every day. We set up that plant. Everything was ready. One night, bandits from Eda. Not full any bandits. Bandits from Edda. I'm telling you, what is Edda Afibo? <laughs> I didn't know that the land in question was in dispute between Abia State or Omporo and them. They used acid and burnt the whole farm land. And they destroyed our bulldozer. My, so, uh, my, my managers were lucky to escape. After that experience, 
We went to the state. The arrangement was the state will provide security. The state did not provide security. We went to Ohafia where they have military to, to, with the help of the state deputy governor, who is from that community, to get us military men that will be staying there. We were paying average of 1.3 million every month to provide our own security. Does that make sense for an investor that is coming to a state to provide investment? Oh. After one month, the military guys left after they were threatened. The military guys we were brought, threatened. Yes, they left. <laughs> we brought um, um, the civil defense. The civil defense we brought that we are disarmed by the bandits. Then, finally, we brought the Bakasi boys, the Aga State Vigilante. That was when we had respite. The Bakasi guys stayed for two months. From the two months, after the second month, the state stopped paying them. And the payment became our responsibility. Can after about two years of wasting investors throw out with eight million the factory burnt down. I advised myself that we cannot continue until we have a government that is willing to provide security for us to go into that place. If we have security in that place, Kalu, today we will have been producing nothing less than 1.5 billion naira worth of products in that community. Question for you. W did you make an effort to do maybe host community fund to give the community guys some equity to bring them in? Did you? Was that on the table? Kalu, we had an arrangement. Listen. To be paying the community outside the government, to be giving them ten percent of every profit we make in that place, and then we are part of our regime. They were, we employed most of the people. They knew it. We are very transparent with them. The state government, through the PPP office, owned ten percent of the business. It was a very let me tell you, the guy that even helped to structure it was a former GM in FCMB, a former director, executive director in Daijio. In fact, the guy is the one who runs uh, Cameroon Brewery now, the National Brewery Oil of Cameroon, Brewery Company of Cameroon. Um, Austin, 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 or oh, Fomba. Austin is one of the most, most, most honest professionals I've ever seen. He worked for the state government for four years without quality salary. The guy sacrificed his career for four years to help develop his state. At a time, the guy was so angry. He was even advising me to sue the state and embarrass the state. I told him no. Austin today is the MD of Cameroon Breweries, the largest national brewery in Cameroon. Very sincere, very top guy. Okay. So, I what are we talking? if I, my mother from, from our school in Idaho State, I schooled at Idaho State, I have a lot of friends in Idaho State. If I, a son of the soil, a local boy, could have this kind of experience, can in, you tell me in how your you will convince, how you will convince convince a, a Malaysian or an Indian. Okay, can you do that? I understand. There was an Indian company that went to Okwangwa to go and set up a cassava processing factory. These guys have spent over 170 million, cleared over 100 hectares of land. The day they were supposed to start work, the community people came to harass them. Those guys went out, went back, and never came back again. Hmm. So I mean, can you, can what you the explain heck? this kind of madness in a country where there is so much lawlessness? So you see, in effect, the people are trying to pay themselves. The community is trying to pay themselves because they do not believe that the the wealth generated will come to them. That's what I see. They were, they, Carlo, there are greedy elements in every community. Because it, it's, 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 it, looks, it looks like the template of the Niger Delta where the oil companies have failed to invest in local communities and then local communities then took up quote-unquote arms to get their own equity and it has worked for them. So it looks like Nigeria is defaulting to the, where the indigents that own the land basically demand for equity up front. Deve, Deve, yes. Deve Levy, that's, that's what I'm, I'm hearing. Yes. And if... That, I mean, that, that, Carlo, that, that, that one is not a problem. Any business that, if even Okomu and Presco are having the same issue, but they've, they've, they've managed to overcome the storm. The major challenge here is the issue of, you know, that even the communities that attack the farm, Carlo, do you know that in our magnanimity, when people are telling us, shoot them, do this, we know the boys, I told them no. You don't solve a problem using, because one thing I discovered about violence, violence begets violence. If you shoot down one person, the other people will come for the event. 
do you know that we arranged our team to go to their communities? To guys, I told I told them I said, okay, let us even ignore this 850 hectares. Do you have your own 850 hectares in your community? We will leave this one and come and develop your own community. They said no. Do you know what they were what they were doing? They were still looking at the old plantation that was doing about one ton per hectare. Their eyes were so blinded by the little patterns they were getting that they didn't see the big picture. Mm. So when we talk about leadership, failure of leadership, even at the grassroots, if we have a working local government system where you have an autonomous local government chairman and councillors, like we had then in the early cities, provinces, where there is so much autonomy, they can control their communities. But today what we have is one law in state government house appointing refrats as local government chairman, those that will collect the jack, keep one percent and return ninety nine percent to them. And we continue in this kind of arrangement. Nigeria is not a place that is barren. Nigeria is a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But the problem we have, Carlo, is the problem of leadership, quality leadership at all levels. Hmm. I hear you. Doctor, it's a challenge. I hear you. So I think we've spent about 45 minutes with you. We've talked about the ups and downs, your own personal experiences, how you've brought investors and you've been bamboozled. You've said that Nigeria is a good investment climate. There are folks listening to this space that want to take notes what where they should invest in. Let's assume a guy here listening has got a million naira. It's not a lot of money, but it's one million naira. And he wants to go into business in this land of milk and honey. Whether it's in a rural area, whether it's in a town, as an investment professional with one million naira, how would you advise this? Your if someone walks into your office, a young lady walks into your office, I have a million naira. I'd like to invest. I'm not just in taking my money in the next two years. I like to take to invest for at least three years. What would be your, should we say, advice? And again, I know this is educational. We're not just disclaimers here. This is all educational. This is not an invitation to buy or sell investment is very risky consult your financial advisor so what would you advise this young person one million naira i want to invest in nigeria what would you say carlo they should come to Abia state only you Abia know, state only Abia state carlo, <laughs> carlo, let, let me tell you no carlo you you, 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 you know a man that lost 328 million with his group yeah, right yeah in Abia state an emo state over a period of six years he is now asking people to come to Abia State. Ask me why. Why? Why? Because what we have now is a different ball game. Now, in Abia now today, Carlos Security is number one. The same on Hafia, where those bandits were. As I'm talking to you now, they, 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 you know the first thing the LSOT did was they dismantle the center of kidnapping and banditry in Abia State and Imoste, which is that. Um, Law Banta, Kato Market. That is number one dislodgement. Number two, now, we are, there is an arrangement now being put in place to empower the mayors. I guess it has one of the best thriving vigilante groups. But they were underfunded under the last government. They were rendered useless under the last government. But under the current arrangement, Alex Oti as governor uh, has empowered the mayors to revive that arrangement in at the local government level. Now, you ask me why would I put my one billion? Like now, we are, we are back. We, we, the first thing we did was that we decided to go into clustered seedlings production. You are asking me where the money will come in one year, right? Mm -hmm. We are doing seedlings now. And what are those seedlings for? Like I told you, Abia is one state. For whatever reason, God has blessed them naturally. Cocoa grows so well in Abia State. Cashew grows so well in Abia State. The palm grows so well in Abia State. Most of the cash crops grow so well in Abia State. So, for now, they are also setting up commodity boards at every of the local government area. The state's own draft is almost being fleshed up. It will be ready very, very soon. Basically, what we are trying to, what we are doing on our own, this is not an invitation for anybody. I'm just advising you on what you can do. If you have friends or people you can trust within those areas, we are doing our own thing. We're not doing crowdfunding with anybody. We don't invite anybody. We do our own thing because we have the resources. I'm giving you that what we are doing. 
what we are doing we are raising nursery and other palms we are raising nursery um cocoa plantations we are raising nursery dwarf cocoa uh, coconuts we are raising nursery date plants why are we raising it for this first year we are getting ready for the next year because government is not a that it's a marathon the whole arrangement is abia has 184 words our plan in the next two three years is to have in every of this world at least 50 hectares of these diverse cash crops it's not something that is just going to be uh, that is kind of science the committees will clear their land they will provide under the security arrangement that is going to be put in place the place will be protected 24 7. it's not where somebody there are people that will stay in the morning people that will stay in the night so what we are trying to produce is to produce the whole work like i told you the last time i came here to do um 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 to raise a tree one of those trees takes an average of about 200 300 naira from beginning average cost but in the open market to to you get it for about 800 900 1000 depending on the quality of the species so just to be so clear just to be clear dog just a poor following so you you are saying like raise the the like the nursery the nursery plants okay so those so yes, the if i raise them myself i can do it for 200 but if outside is sold for 800 is that what you're saying yes and if that is between 200 300 but outside there it is sold for 800 mm. and can you can't get it wrong i like i always say the one i'm doing now is being managed by three people in three different locations 20 20 000. Like I told you, we did 300,000 that was practically mostly destroyed. Now, what we did was that we, we, we faced it. Two, we, are, we faced two with water. The other one was just with barbed wire. We have dedicated water supply. I spent on a weekly basis 30,000 naira worth of water because we are doing dry farming. The numbers are so easily, you can see it clearly. In nine months, by june july august we will be ready to transplant it that, that's you your farm so so d yes my own farm so the model is that you 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 grow the the, the nursery then you transplant yes. to your farm and essentially you are investing in agriculture is that that's what i'm hearing a state like an other state that is already and other states are because I know that other states will emulate. It's a matter of we don't just want to kickstart the inferno. But a state like Abia State that is that is already looking at doing in every of the one eighty four was fifty hectares of this, fifty hectares of this, fifty hectares of this. They will need loads of seedlings. Like for example, now to do a hectare of the palm plantation or the date palm, plant, you need about one fifty trees. To do one thousand hectares, you need about 150,000 trees to do 10,000 hectares with about 1.5 million trees. Mm. And what they are trying to do is about nine to 18,000 hectares. So they will, let me tell you, if you go to even the nearest that is even doing, that not even producing the kind of species that we are producing with Wema, nine four. Mm. As of today, if you place an order with nine four, you cannot get that order in the next eight months to one year. Oh. Because they are booked in advance. Okay, so talk, talk, talk again. Let me, let me again coalesce this conversation. So what I'm hearing you say is that if I have a million naira, I am in Jos, yeah. I am in Sokoto, I am in Abelkota. You are saying a good investment is for me to go into agriculture, but the agriculture I'm talking about is the nursery, the raising of nursery for these cash crops. Am I? Yes. Okay. And these yes. cash crops are. Can you give me these three cash crops again, just for, for those following? Which three? Which, which are these cash crops, please? Chedera palm plantation. That's palm 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 tree palm tree. Yeah. Yes. The dwarf coconut. Dwarf coconut. Yeah. The um, co um, cocoa trees. Cocoa. I think cocoa. Tree. Yeah. Yes. Cocoa. Cocoa. Tree. And then you can also look at the Mexican red papaya. Mexico. That's is that purple or yes, purple, yes. Okay. In fact, that one 
That one, Carlo, if you if you have three plus of lama dispensed, that one is a cash cow. That mm. one from the nursery, from the nursery, by the ninth month, you start you start harvesting. Are this exportable? So if let's say again, I'm a I'm a young guy, I have the one million. Mm. So of course, one million era, I my, my father, I have some land. So I, I clear that land out. I go and buy the seedlings, I put in the ground, I have maybe one hundred of those things. And they grow now, so I that's become my farm. What happens? Do I export these seeds? I'm assuming that the person asks us will go through school on fertilizer, on how to take care of the plants and all that. But what happens? Do I is it exportable? What's the end goal of this the, cocoa, cocoa? And the, 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 the volume you have with one million naira is not exportable. Mm. But what, what? But what is happening now with what we we are trying to do in Abia State with the commodity board that is going to come on stream? So basically, that, can, let, me, let me tell you what the idea is. It's, it's not it's not a big thing. Now, you know the committees now are going to be producing in clusters, right? Mm-hmm. The commodity board is go, it's private sector driven. It's not government. You know, the only thing government is doing is as to pass the law that provides us with the strength to make sure that nobody comes into Abia State and leaves Abia State with any commodity without passing through that board, right? Okay. It's very simple. Like I give you an example now. A ton of the cashew nut today sells for about eight hundred thousand naira. The raw cashew nut, mm. the that the one that is not shelled. Mm. A ton of the shelled cashew nut sells for about ten thousand mm. dollars. And the four tons of unshelled cashew gives you one ton of shelled cashew. Mm. So, Carlo, with three point two million, you can buy unshelled nut. With about two million, you can sell it. Hmm. That one is exportable at about ten, eleven thousand dollars at the FOB. So basically, what we are trying to do here is that the man who is producing in one with one million cannot export, right? Oh, yeah. We we have people that will buy off buy it off him hmm. at a good price. Hmm. For example, now traditionally, alarms goes to Isochi to through. To Ihube, to all other areas where they put cashew, and they give monies to very poor people in the communities. Mm. They come and buy it of them at sixty thousand naira per ton, or eight thousand naira per ton, and they make so much money. No, we are the state government is providing this PPP arrangement to give people when people go to the farm to cultivate the cashew plantation. They have an idea and expectation of the kind of money they can make, mm. devoid of anybody cheating them or manipulating them. Or using them as slaves. Mm. If you look at that, was the structure that they used to grow the Malaysian Indonesia palm plantation. That was also the model they used in growing the tomato value chain in Italy, known as the Capado model. There's nothing we are trying to do that is a new invention. It's actually building on a model that has worked elsewhere. Gotcha. So, gotcha. So, so, Doc. The incentive, so, one million naira, the person chooses, I will advise anybody that has one million. You, you have an enclosed space. Even your mother's backyard, you can do this thing. All you need is to... It, it's not even something that you even need to... So much technology to do. Carlo, I'm not... I didn't that Greek science. All I did was got a director from the heart and brought in some people who are related to me and who are these people. And the guy taught them. The guys managing these clusters, we are trained in-house. Doc, so Doc, is it also a good idea for the guy to sort of like get together? Like maybe I know people that go and watch Arsenal in the football in, in the viewing center, or people that are in church, or people that are in school. Maybe get together. So combine your one million naira to make it like hundred million, and then sort of go into this together. Yeah, how am I? How am I Doctor, how am I one of my very very good friend? He's a farmer in the north. I think the north north um, eastern side of the country. So I think let me hear his perspective. As he has been listening to you. Harna, please go ahead. You, you had a question. I'm, I'm very surprised that, that he's saying that you can go into agriculture with one million naira. He's you know, saying he, he's saying you cannot. I'm the one saying that. I'm 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 trying to make him say you can because I want more people to oh, go into yeah. You, you he, cannot. Or you cannot. <laughs> he's. I'm the one trying to do democracy. I'm trying to get a guy that really has. He, he, he guy is he, he's working, he has saved up a million naira and he wants to do something with that one million. He no, can you he, cannot, uh, 
But can he not invest in a you know form a cooperative, a quote unquote, with yes. his friend? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That that is the arrangement. You can yeah. form cooperatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and, and Doc, you can just go back. Where did you get, where would he get, yeah, you, you said knife for, where would he, would he get the seedlings from? You, I mean, if I have you, money. You, 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 you can get the seedlings from knife for, you can get the seedlings from Wilma, you can get the seedlings from Sefabko, you can also get the seedlings from, there's a guy in Kanu, Jafago. You know, Jafago. Most of my, my papaya, seedlings the ones the the first papaya seedlings that we used to develop our own seedlings was from the jafago the guy is based in Kano. he's very good very honest guy i transfer money to him he would have i've never said anything to him that he never will be to me with any issue he does it regularly no no stories hmm. i mean doctor i wish after this i'm going to hold 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 you sir so you can give me the, these names so i can retweet I will, it i will give you i'll give you their contact i know people are i'm already getting lots of dms people want to know about this mm. Uh, yeah. Harona, a question for you. Um, doctor is saying that we should all go to Abia State to do this. I, 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 I don't know if you joined at the very, very beginning, but is this something you think it, so, that can happen also there? Because date palm, I was surprised that palm oil grows in the north of Nigeria as well. It grows, yes, it grows. Yeah, I, will, I, will, I thought it was only a southern crop, but palm oil grows no. in Kaduna. Yes. Okay. All right. So, okay, Doc. My, my. So, you've answered that question. Uh, Mba has a question. Mba, your hands are up. Mba Ifebuchi, please go ahead. All right. Thank you, Paolo. Um, Doc. Good evening. From here. Good evening, Doc. I am a farmer. Uh, I I started farming from Abia State after my service. Okay. I started uh, graduate and the production fund with BOI. So I understand what it means for a young person to go into agriculture from scratch. Now, there is a lot of things we need to understand here. You can start farming with one million naira. You don't grow in a day. Growth is a process. I started small. Today we have mm, half branches in Abia State and we have a, where we crush Pampana here in Enugu State that will, will do in a bigger way. So you cannot tell a young person that he cannot start farming with one million. But, uh, with not, I'm coming. With not up to one million naira. Before I finished my service and I got <clears throat> graduated from financial for support, then I moved into catfish farming before we moved into palm canal. And that is how we have been set up to the earth. Well, there is a lot young people to note when it's come to farming. You are going into a village to invest. And when you move into a village to invest, and you wish to live there as a young person who is investing out of money, is a different ball game. Because many persons may not be opportune, may not be opportune like talk to have contact with the governor, deputy governor, and rest of them. Unemployed Nigerians can go into agriculture and make money without without waiting for government to help. Now, if you go into a community like I started from Ugunabo, Doc, I believe you know Ugunabo local government. Yes, yes, I started from Ugunabo, from Ugunabo to to Ibuba, from Imo River, then Federal. We are now in Federal Road, and we are here in Enugu here. So, the village to stay. There is a way you live there. Sorry, can we know? Can we know the size of your farm that you started with, the land area? Okay. Well, while I was having, I started with only six plots of land at the back of local government Uguna. But if you go to Uguna, they knows me. Was the six plots given to you for rent, or you bought it? No, one old woman they give me free of charge to farm. Mm. If it's it's not free of charge, yo, she just so if it's free of charge, it's not a business, quote unquote. You get where I'm coming from. So so how did how did you how did you irrigate it with one million? Let me come. Let me finish. As a youth copper, you understand. I was having then. That is what I'm trying to tell you. When you are talking about irrigation, we are not talking about running into that is farming in the dry season. If you are going to farm into dry season, if you are going into dry season farming in Adia State, it's more favorable than here in Enugu. Because from that, uh, we'll down. Almost each every farm there has bubble. 
almost every cup. Them, so which them? Which them? From Osisoma, from Osisoma, flyover, Loji, Ihe, down there. I'm from Enugu, but I served there. I know there very well. I lived there and I stayed there very well. So to get borehole is 120,000 naira, then dig it out from ground. So it's very cheap and very easy. Besides, I did not say borehole because I already have oh, a borehole. Which borehole? Which bar, which bar, 120,000 where? You cannot sink borehole with I one million naira. Two thousand and six. To sink borehole in two thousand and sixteen in Ogunabo is six is one hundred and twenty. Oh, that is not true. It's, it's not true. completely, 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 far, 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 far. You know what I'm talking about? My brother, about. Please, you are talking to educated people, not in it. Okay. It's not true. Even, I even, am, I, am not, I am not here. Listen, for, listen, here listen. For. Listen to me, but listen, listen, please. To move the drilling machine is uh, to even move the drilling machine. Let me tell you. Can, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you. For you to even invite. A person that does borrow to come and look at the site will pay him hundred thousand. How much does well, it cost me? Help you, dog. No, I am not saying this to you. Are you? Are you? Using, are you? Using, are you? If you reach, if you reach in Abia State, if you reach in Abia State in Aba, Umba, from Umba, but I mean, it's Umba, but it's it's clear. People at number one who go to drill borehole. No, no, but Umba, I think it's. You what I know. No, I. It's not possible. Yeah, I don't think it's not possible. The person that will do the borehole will do a study. Maybe it was. It's not possible. But on back, could you clarify the borehole? Was it like a manual borehole? Did you bring a machine? It's to... a manual borehole. I said 15, so you... 11 to 15, 16 pipes. So you, got... manual so you got people to dig the ground with manual labor. That's with not. manual labor. But that's not. But they will tap water from another borehole and be putting inside. The sand will come out and they will dig it in a day. So, Doc, he's digging. He's digging manual. He's not doing machine. He's digging with his hand. Even to do soccer away. Kalo, I'm from the southeast now. What are we talking about here? Are you talking about borehole? Can we have to dig the ground? I know what it's trying to say. You dig the ground in 2016. But hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, but hold let me on. Finish it. But, but, but listen, cool down. But, but calm down, calm down. But let me tell you, either in the north, we are not talking about Lagos. So. We are not talking about Lagos where you can dig by the time you do um, 10 meters, you will see water. We're talking, well, listen, listen, we're talking about Abia and Imo. Okay. For you, even if you want to just dig a space, where you will dig a space and where you'll be putting water, but listen, you will, you will get people that will labor people that will dig it for you. When they've dug the place for you, maybe as you decide to do it um, 10 meter by 10 meter by 10, 10 square meter. Can, um, but you will need to plaster it too and put concrete to retain the water. You will need to buy pipe. You will need to buy pumping machine. There's no way one two thousand would. I I I think Doc Doc. Let me put it this way, right? Uh, uh, for, I think Mbai is talking about the incremental, very 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 yeah. So uh, Mbai, I Mbai, I hear what you are saying, but I think you have to understand that you know. I I, I'm, I I want to agree with you, but these guys are talking about agriculture as a business, you know. And I think you are you are correct, mm -hmm. you. But you are coming at it. Do you know why I made this statement? Do you know why I made this statement? I made this man, this statement because someone with one million can start farming. I hear you. I know where I am today in agro business. Mm. I know how it started. Do you understand me? I don't want to discourage somebody with one million. If you use one million and go into cucumber, next year you are going to go into banana plantation. This is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Agriculture is in different chains and different value chain. Mm. You understand me? In different category. Okay. It's not what you do today, you will do tomorrow. One mm. machine I'm using today is more than five million. When I started, mm. I didn't even have a machine of mm. 100,000 naira. 
wait, mba wait, mba. I hear you. Now listen eh. Mba with one million. You know you say you are, you started as a fragrant. Let me I want to understand this. With one million, listen, you can do even two hectares of cucumber farm. Or even three. With yes. one million, you can do two hectares of rice plantation. Yes. Now, we are talking about capital outlay. For the for the six months you're going to stay for the cucumber or for the rice to be harvested, would you be paying rent? Would you be eating? Would you be running other expenses? I want you to understand what we mean. See, listen here. Eh? Subsistence family is not what we're talking about here. Carl is asking, listen. If you are doing, Carl is asking. Look at the question. Carl is asking. If you have one, if I have one million dollars now, I listen to me now. Yes, one million dollars, I give, I, I give it to Page Microfinance. Page Microfinance can comfortably pay me ten or twelve percent interest, right? That ten percent okay. interest is actually a loss in my money worth because by the time you apply inflation rate to it apply foreign exchange devaluation to it you discover that that one million that i invested and which i received 1.1 million in one year or in six months is actually less than money value Carl is asking i want you to understand where we're coming we're not arguing with you that one million cannot do subsistence farming we are talking about one million naira investment by somebody, and the person is saying, "I'm giving you one million umba. I want at the end of six months or one year, I want an a return that beats inflation and beats devaluation. Maybe give me back one point two million. Let me tell you this, eh? I will be honest. You, it's something that I've been involved in, both as a financier and the. Uh, uh, that we, we've tried it before. I'll give you an example. In Umunuch, I will quote the community. We brought two groups. One was in Umunuch. One was one area, I think, around uh, Umwa. It was one of my guys. He could go Lungwa. I, I tell you people, you can, call, you can confirm. The guy provided money, just like this, we were talking about. It was about half for them to produce one hectare of rice. But he will buy the rice from them. And then go and process it in a million plants in Abakeleke. What he will buy was the paddy rice. All the people he gave money to in Umu Nochi never returned his money. The only place he got, listen, do you know why? It's not as if they ate the money. Either the rice was eaten by rodents <laughs> or one issue or the other. The only place he got his money back was, I think, those guys from Umu here. And do you know why? They worked closely with those from with uh, Federal Investment Bank called Umudike. I think they did it in cluster in an first environment where they shared facilities like water, security, and all the rest of it. Pesticides and all those of it. The truth is, one million can give you a um, subsidy. But I will not give my one million that somebody took okay, a farm for me and give me back 1.2 million i can only do it under an aggregated environment that was okay we have 30 people contributing 1 million in that area you have enough muscle to mitigate some of the risks that will come against your business over time 1 million that i cannot mitigate most of this we can talking about like security uh -huh, you understand? I, 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 I hear what you. I, I, I have not. Mba, 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 hold on. Mba, just I, I get like I said. Mba, both truths are correct. I, I, but how do you understand the context of what we're talking about? Right? I completely agree with you. I but I follow you from beginning. I, I agree with him. Completely yeah, yeah. Completely. And, I, and I want us. I don't want us to argue back and forth. I think it's just to get the learnings. People are, are following us, and I want us to get the, the to pick the learnings from what you have said. And what Hannah and him have said, I think that's the the, the point uh, we we should go on on this for. Let me just bring someone else in here. I've got Mr. Adeniro Yeni. Mr. Adeniro, you've been listening to this conversation. They've been talking about Abia, Southeast, and all that. What's your take? Um, have you been blessed? What do you want to contribute, sir? Go ahead. All right. Um, thank you very much, and um, good evening, everyone. Um, so yes. So quickly, um, to quickly weigh in on what uh, Dr. Obira and Zimba are saying, I think the two of them are actually correct. But the context differs in the sense that agribusiness and 
safety can culture are two different things. Now, Dr. Bera is talking about irrigation, he's talking about security, he's talking about um, soil specific fertilizers. Now, for a proper agribusiness, you have to put all of those things in place, which is going to cost a lot of money in the real sense of it. But the model that uh, Mr. Amba is um, discussing might not necessarily need all of that, which makes it very subsistent. So when you now want to apply the principles of business, um, what Mr. Amba is trying to do might not be really sustainable at the end of the day because now some of the inputs that are supposed to make the venture profitable are not there. If you are doing farming and you are not doing education, anything can happen. We all know what is going on with climate change. I think rain can just stop falling. And when that happens, your profit is wiped off. Mm. So in the recent of this, we are all advocating for the model that Mr. Obiora, uh, Dr. Obiora is you know, talking about, where um, people are doing agriculture the right way. They are putting all the right things in place. Because you cannot, I mean, a farm that you know, established and one night, X men invaded it because there is no security, there is no fence, right? So we cannot continue to do agriculture um, that thing. But the two of them are actually correct. With one million, you can do some agriculture which might not really succeed because some important things are not taken care of. Mm. While the person that is investing a lot of money, um, you know, putting the right input in place, might you know have a higher success of um, higher success in that. I mean, I've practiced both before. Um, the input, the things that Dr. Bella was talking about, I also did it about two years ago, which unfortunately failed. I invested about 400 k on that venture, and it failed. I did not get one naira out of it. And the reason was because I didn't put, I mean, I, I only bought the things, any other factors were not there, because I felt like, okay, I can manage, I don't need irrigation, I don't need, I don't need that. At the end of the day, the whole venture, it, I, it was a total loss for me. So the two are correct, just that the chances of success, or when you put all the right to the piece, the chances of success is higher than when you just want to do it, when you just want to do the subsistence method that our forefathers were doing. Yeah. So, uh, talking, yeah. so talking about um, the Southwest experience, um, I think there, there is almost, it's almost the same experience everywhere. Um, there is insecurity almost everywhere for farmers. I've consulted for farms where they had to relocate the farm because 100 acres and every every two weeks you find eight men visiting the farm and they are not able to continue farming because it's becoming trade to the owner of the farm and the workers at all. So um, there is like a cut across um, factors that affect almost all farms in Nigeria. Insecurity. Climate change is actually very real. I mean, it gives what a lot of people, uh, a lot of people have uh, misinformation about it. But in the true sense of it, we have, we have seen situation where we made plants, we planted, and rain refused to fall. Right. So that also is a cut across issue. We all know that every almost every year now, there is this flood that occurs in the uh, middle of Nigeria that wipes away millions of dollars of investment, that is also um, a factor. But we now come to the question, uh, what investment options are available in the agri sector? I think we need to, we need to disaggregate that great value chain into different chains in the but then, uh, one is thing that uh, yes, can you hear me? I can hear you, I wanted to, to wrap up a bit, just, uh, and your audio, if you could speak up a bit. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, yes. So um, I was saying that um, it is very important um, from an investment point of view to disaggregate the agriculture or agribusiness into different value chain. So mistake, one mistake that a lot of people have done in the past is to just invest in primary production, whereas there are different aspects of agriculture that you can actually invest in. One of them is logistics. If I have more, if I have a lot of money, I will, I will rather invest in logistics than the actual setting up a farm. Because the cost of moving, not a lot of farmers can afford you know, moving their goods from one location to another. And that is where 
an investment solution can come in. So logistics is one of the areas where you can make your money to move a ton of maize between, in fact, between the same states. The amount that you will charge as a logistics person, at the end of the day, you find out that you are even making more money than people that put that money to do the actual farming. So logistics is one area where um, you can people can invest as far as the agricultural chain is concerned. Another one is storage. Now storage is a big deal for a lot of farmers, uh, both commercial farmers, subsistence farmers, anybody that can solve the problem of storage is really going to make a lot of money. Now, uh, let me give you a scenario. You will realize that at some point in the year, you can get tomatoes, you can get one kg of tomatoes for uh, about a thousand naira. Then at some other point in the year, this same tomato can sell for as high as 5,000. Now the difference between these price changes is just storage. So anybody that can solve that storage issue to make sure that there is and all year round availability of agri produce is going to make a lot of money. So that's um, logistics storage. Um, another one is the input supply, which Dr. Obiora also mentioned. Input supplies in terms of seedlings, seeds, those are low risk investment options for agriculture. They are low risk because you don't have to put a lot of things in place. For instance, you can be an, a seedlings importer. You can import seedlings from, I mean, developed countries from Netherlands and redistribute within the um, agricultural ecosystem. Yeah. You can also. I, and I want also, to. I don't know. I, 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 I want. I want to make sure people are following you because you are dropping a very important point. You said number one, transportation, logistics, logistics yeah. because your order is your order is really bad. Number two, you said the seedlings. Yeah. And then the yes. and then the, the yes. number two is the storage. I want us to, to, to go with that. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, um, logistics, transportation. Yeah. Um, and yeah. when you look at, I don't. I I, 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 like, I, 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 I like. I have to cut you up, so your audio is very poor. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. I don't know. Your audio is is, is echoing back. It's I don't know. No, 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 sorry about that. Do, do, Dr. Vera, I mean, just a question for you. When I'm in the States, yeah. my farmer here in the States, every planting year, they, they send her a tick book of, of seeds and she orders the seeds from that book. Do, do, do we, do we can, can I import seeds into Nigeria? Is it allowed? Or those guys have said you seeds, are they seeds from Nigeria or they are imported seeds? How does it go? No, they are, they are hybrid imported seeds. Like they... The papaya that Jafago sold to us was yeah. imported from Mexico. And oh. uh, interestingly, we've actually, from the seeds, we've actually uh, created our own seeds. You understand? Matured papaya, we stripped it, took out the seeds, dried it, stored it, and now we are reselling it and it's giving us the same output and yield. The, the last speaker was making very very important points. Very, yeah, his he, audio he, was he, just his audio was. No, also... He clearly he clearly understands what we are talking about here. In fact, the, the agri value chain is so huge. Like we talked about integration, the person that is doing up up upstream, that is doing cultivation, should be different from the person that is taking this. Uh, this is the person that is storing. Remember that, for example, I know we talked about uh, two harvest seasons. If you cultivate a hectare of rice, right, and after after eight months, um, after um, three months or uh, five months, you harvest. Remember that the paddy rice that you harvested, you have to dry it, you have to store it. You're not going to process this, the whole thing the same day. There's going to be silos to store it while you take it to the processing plant where it is going to be processed. Then separate the rice from the 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 shaft and the hull, and then the stone it and all those stuff. So upstream is good, storage is good, distribution is good, implicitly is good, and that is why we need so much integration. And then off takers of even the final consumables. You know, we talked about. Um, um, the consumer board. The consumer board is going to have a lot of warehouses across board. Warehouses where these things will be stored, 
why it is being evacuated. Carlo, I took out time. What, in fact, it was the former governor of Imo that introduced me to what the Danish guys are doing in Côte d'Ivoire. The guys went into Côte d'Ivoire in 2006. By 20, by 2016, those guys were already exporting over 52 million dollar worth of Cavendish banana. They've done over 1,800 hectares. They harvest, they process, they export in the same day. Have we put that to ask ourselves the kind of integration and logistics that goes into what Kenya is doing? Mm -hmm. Kenya, on an annual basis, exports over $3.5 billion of vegetables, of fruits, of, of coffee, of, of, of um, 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 flowers annually. You know, from Mombasa, from Mombasa, Kenya, Carlo, to the nearest airport in Europe is seven hours flight or eight hours flight. From Samumbakwe Airport or Lagos Airport, Abuja Airport, to the nearest airport in the UK is about six hours flight. It's actually faster to fly into Europe from 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 uh, Umba Owere or Lagos or Kano than to fly from Mombasa. So how come do you understand the integration? These are things that we need to understand as a country. I think, Doc, in, in Kenya, they pick the flowers and they put them on the plane. The flowers would bud and bloom. And as they're landed in Amsterdam, the flowers are all bloomed. It's timed. It's timed to, yes. the, to, the, to the minute. So that if you exactly. have a, a location where you have pothole or police demanding for bribes, it won't work. <laughs> Everything it has to work. work to the to the hour to pick the flowers, put them on the plane, land in Amsterdam, and sell them. Well, let me get Jason. Jason too. If I, 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 I'll come to you. Jason, go ahead, sir. You had a question or a comment? Jason too. Jason going once. Jason going twice. Ajogo, please hop okay, in, sir. I'm here. I'm here. Please, good evening, yeah. sir. Jason, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mr. Mr. Kalu, thank you very much for all you do on Twitter. God bless to you. Amen. Okay. Yeah, quick one. I I work with the federal government. In fact, this um, conversation this night is actually a huge eye-opener for two things. I've been thinking in my head, okay, probably if I can gather one or two million, I can start something. <laughs> I was thinking, okay, probably I'll just start um, corn, then um, add banana and, um, I mean, sorry, plantain and cassava along the line. But with all of this now, to God, I, I am... I no, am no, 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 no. So, look at... And look. ultimately, my income... <laughs> sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir. No, no, go ahead. Um, if, I, if I did not... If I choose not to touch my salary from January to December, it would just be around one point something. Maybe 1.8 year, 1,080 or thereabouts. Um, way, way less than one, one, two, sir. And... I have uh, been seeing the Greek as my excuse. Probably I can just gather something and just start. Not big, of course, but maybe five acres of corn and all of that. I was just thinking along that line. But this one, uh, I really hope maybe the pros can help out. Thank you, sir. But, and Mr. Kalu, please, yeah. I'd like a recording of this. Thank you, sir. It's always recorded. So if you look at my Twitter handle, you see the podcast there. It's, it's on that podcast. It's on YouTube. So... After a Twitter session, if you go to YouTube or the podcast handle, you get this recording on, and all past recordings are all there. But Dr. Obi, I want to ask you a question. The gentleman saying um, he said he spoke about storage, logistics, and ceilings. Can't I go into storage and the rest with my one million naira? Like, can we help Jason out? If Jason says he's going to buy GP tanks and store oh. green and charge rent for the green, isn't, isn't that agriculture? Can't he do that with one million naira? Carlo, we are, he's, he's right. Even the sesame. Carlo, let me tell you. It's, it's like, like Jesse now, eh? Right? Can you hear me, Carlo? Yes, of course I can hear you. Am I audible? Yes, you can. Good. Like, he can decide with his one million, right? I'll give you an example. I have, in, in KB State, there are rice farmers, very honest rice farmers that you can go to as okay. I want to be buying your rice. You go to the farms. You know, they have their meals. Most of them have their meals close there. You can get 50 kg bag of rice for 38,000. If you have 1 million, you can decide to buy 10 bags. 
then we build it or put it into a truck and send it to your place. There are machines that you where you can go and destroy it, bag it, and store it in a very dry place. You can do it maybe in March because the next harvest is March. By December, you can sell that bag of rice, destroyed and cleaned out, looking good as for it, for fifty five thousand to sixty thousand. But there's a risk. Where you store that rice must be so secured that rats or rodents cannot go there and help you out. That the humidifying system is so good that it will not start developing way for. That the security is so good that one madman may not decide to break your window and carry one bag and start eating. So mm. there are every every there are a whole lo there are loads of opportunities across the value chain. But before you go in, you need to sit down, look at the risk, and mitigate it. That is why I always say, in most developed economies or even developing economies where agriculture has become the mainstay. Look at the issue of Netherlands. Netherlands exports food and export nothing less than $10 billion worth of dairy products across the value chain. 1.6 million cows only. But they have 18,000 dairy clusters. Hmm. Employing 47,000 people. Ne small so Netherlands. There are clusters. And the clusters are actually an agro-pastoral arrangement. You have cultivators of legumes, vegetables within that area. They will, you have people that will take the animal dung, process it, generate methane gas, uh, produce uh, maggots for meat, and they used to do the magma feed for fish. Then the, the processed and the fermented poo, -poo is micro-processed and used as fertilizer. <laughs> and then, the feed that is raised under the arrangement, the waters are used also to irrigate the farm. See, agri is not something one man starts and said, that, was, that is why you see people failing over and over, over again. In these countries, they do it in clusters, each helping each other. The man who is doing the dairy is producing the poo poo. Somebody is buying the poo poo to process the poo poo into fertilizer to produce maggots under a biodigested technical technological arrangement. Somebody is using the fertilizer to produce things. The man who you understand, so is fully under an agro pastoral arrangement. The problem we have here is that we do not have that rigor that diligence that intentionality that discipline to sacrifice our greed and help people like him back like him now I, I i'm so excited with what he has done for himself but i can tell you out of 20 mba that tried what he tried only him succeeded he succeeded because maybe dint of exceptionalism or whatever but do you know that we can actually raise 20 mba under a cluster arrangement mitigating all their risks Hmm. I get, I get what you're so let, Just to close out for Jason. So Jason, I think like there's something you could do in terms of storage, GP tanks, buying these things that, that go out of session. Because I saw something online in Kenya. It was like a small container, but it was refrigerated with solar. And what they, they put their produce of the of the seed, not the the agricultural produce was stored in that big kind of refrigerator thing that was powered by solar. I will try to get the name of it. And essentially is that these guys will buy the crops from the from market to men, store it in that vault, and it's con it's powered by solar. And the market women can come back there over the year and pick it up and sell. So instead of having corn season or rice season or maize season or mango season, they have this maize longer and longer and longer because it's properly stored. That's also agriculture, you know, so you can start off start off with. So even dung, you know, if you have a guy, all this farm, you, you see um, cows all over Abuja, right? If you have someone who say, okay, pack all this dung for me and you keep it and you can basically use it and create manure, like doctor is saying, 
food, fish uh, feed is very, very expensive. So there are many things you can do. Uh, that is also agriculture with that one million. That's I'm, I'm fighting for you, bro. So let, let, let's. I, I hope you can get into it because if you wait for your salary and trying to invest it alone, inflation has already taken thirty percent of your salary. So you are starting off with seven hundred thousand. That's the problem you have, right? All right. All right, now, now I've got Jin- Ajogo. Please go ahead. I, I thank you for waiting with us, Mr. Ajogo. Thank nice, you, sir. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for letting me in and thank everyone for what you have been doing. Uh, for me, uh, what I want to talk about is more like a question and also an insight to what I've also invested in mm-hmm. in the last six months. So, in the last six months, I, I got a proposal from a guy told me about uh, to get 10 hectares of land and invest in palm fruits, which I did. We didn't get up to 10 hectares. I go, we got up to 8 hectares. Uh, then we, we planted it. But uh, fortunately for me, uh, you know, the problem we have with Nigeria is labor. Uh, you, the people, don't, people don't just uh, keep to their words. I want to invest that kind of money and... Uh, and you don't really, for example, what happened in the last few days? They're giving us reports. When I was here, I left Nigeria a few few months ago, so I, I'm not able to go and check things out myself anymore. So uh, we get fake reports. Like, then you send somebody there, they go see, you're a bit confused. You don't know where to, either to continue with whatever they're giving you or uh, back out. You cannot back out because you have already invested some money. So the, the first question is, uh, how do you tackle this kind of thing, knowing that you are not around? And uh, also, the second question is, when you look at the money that is going to generate from there, when I was in Nigeria, when I was told about the outcome, I was really excited. But when I look at it from this side right now, it doesn't really look good. Like It not really look like a good investment from what the amount I'm going to earn from it. So what will you, so the question is, what will you advise to do at this point? How do you manage when you're not around? How do you manage security? How do you manage to get trust, make sure you are, uh, all these lies and everything are caught aside? And considering the fact that I'm no longer, I'm no longer in Nigeria right now, this money is not really, it's not what I'm looking at doesn't look good. Yeah, so that's my question. Let me not take too much time. Talk any insights? Yes, yes, my brother, you, you, are, you are not the only one that have had such ugly experiences. Even me that is in Lagos, Nigeria, I have had such. I I set up one of the, one of the factories that was set up in our hands there, Obing the local government area, was a massive factory. In fact, I even got some of my friends who were abroad to buy machines to install with us a palm kernel crush your oppressive machine. You, you will not believe it. We raised money and sent to the guys that were supposed to be managing it. It was a very simple thing. Buy palm kernel, crush it. We have off the cars already who are willing to buy. They were reporting that they bought palm kernel. But I was, I was the internal controller, as an investment banker, I sent an internal controller to go in there and check. At that time, he wanted to come. They would tell him one story or the other why he cannot be able to meet them. And my mind never went to the extent that are they playing fast one on me. Within a total of one month, we lost that 15 million naira because when after a month, even me, I was filled up. I had now had to force some people from Lagos to go and see what was happening. They told me that they've crushed the canal, they've supplied it to the off taker. I had to call the chairman of the company to uh, say, did he say any of my boys? Now, as I'm talking to you now, two years after, the matter is still in court, trying to recover. So, these investments, the major problem we have in Nigeria is the issue of this honesty and the issue of the justice administrative system. Somebody took your 15 million naira, somebody took your 11 million naira, you arrested him, he quickly gets bail. Before you know it, he runs to one magistrate court and pay bribe and get injunction to stop you from arresting him on one high court. Let me tell you, it is pay for play. And you, your money is tied up. You are far away doing other businesses. Over time, if you're, if you're chicken-hearted, you can just say to yourself, let it go. 
and the person claps and laughs, you lose for the next person. So I clearly understand your worries. That is why I always advise anybody who is offshore that wants to do any investment should look at only cash crops. If anybody is telling you to provide him with monies without any guarantee. Now, look, what I do now is that you will not only give me guarantee, you will give me poetic check. At least that one, there will be no stories. And I promise you, I must jail you. Because what, this what, is... What did, you, what did you call it? Guarantee and what? Protected checks. checks. Protected checks. That's you write okay. checks now, checks in advance. And doctor, please, and, uh, please, please clarify the cash crop. You said, you, please clarify what cash crops are, please. Cash crops, like he said, he has eight hectares of land. Basically, what he will have done, he, he should even have involved. Just get professionals, like like I said, the guys that I work with is in ITA, Nihot. How many hectares of land do I have, bros? I have ten hectares of land. How many trees can it contain? One fifty times ten, which is. 1,500. How much will it take you to cultivate these trees and make sure that it is ready? You will tell me, then you will give me a positive check and a guarantee against my money. And I will have undertakings too. And the, when I be guaranteed, there will be guarantors that will also say, okay, this person, because if you don't have such in place, you will end up, like one of the things we do now is that the, the biggest guarantors you can get are the Christian Women's Fellowship. Any investment that I'm doing is mostly with women. Hmm. Those people that will take care of the crime. I'm telling you, I'm being honest with you. I get the agri guy who will do it for me, pay him his management fee, either one million or two million. If he's going to supply me, the women group, whoever is going to, because the women, what I do is that they, they will be using the place to cultivate their cucumber. They are amazed and help me with it and ensure that the cash crop grows. In three, four, five years, by the time the trees are grown, it will no longer be useful for them to use it. Once the tree is grown and start producing, the next thing now you should do is how do I secure that people do not harvest it? And how do we do that? Like the one I did with my mother in my village, cashew plantation. Because I didn't want her having the stress. Every year we do a tender. The youths who are supposed to be the ones that I will steal it, they will they will buy it in the farm, and they will give me poetic check and they will go and harvest it. Who will betide you? You don't return my money. <laughs> so, so okay. So the, you 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 do forward sales to the villagers and the they, yes forward sales the, the plantation yes. So they are they, they already own it, so that way they don't have they don't, they, they can't steal because they are stealing from themselves. <laughs> yes, yes, they can't steal it. Yeah. Interesting. So I, I joke. I don't know if that will be answers or gives you a few pointers on how you can maybe if you are abroad and you want to do business in Nigeria. He's talking about women group. That's using the women there, working with the community there, uh, protecting your investments. You know and all. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks a, so much. a few points there. Okay, got you. All right, thank you, Jogo. National. National, is it? Um, yes. Good evening, everyone. National, how are you doing? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Yes, I would like to appreciate. Um, all the speakers so far um, for their contributions. I do have um, some doubts, or would I say some challenges to it, um, investing in agri-logistics. Mm. I don't know if um, to, to get a KK bus currently costs around 2.350. Hmm. So I think that just exceeds our 1 million era um, point of, of peak. What if so, what what if you come would, together with maybe your friends? You know, you have four friends that you guys go watch Arsenal together. So you guys contribute, you know, and you have a little cooperative together. That that might be something. Yeah, that might. Be, okay. It doesn't have to be new. Also, it might be you know. It doesn't have to be. I mean, second hand hires or something like that. You know, it's something. Yeah. Yes, yeah, very true. So we are to- we are talking about um, the Nigerian economy and investment opportunities worth one million naira. So I was exp- I was trying to see if we could digress a bit and talk about NGX. Because last year I would say, um, for instance, um, someone who invested in one million era 2023 January with um, Transcorp Hotel, as at December 2023, their profit was um, over 10 percent. That's 1.11 million. So I really think um, looking at the NGX to invest a million naira would be very, very good. And then again, we have um, 
bottlenecks when we have to look into exportation. So I really don't know how the government can make things easy for those who are looking to export agri products outside the country. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good question. On the NGX one, we had a guest last week and we, we went into the NGX in detail. He actually even gave us sample portfolios, how you should invest your money, it's not just NGX, even foreign. And usually we do this all the time. So we're trying to do a, an alternative to the NGX this week to say, okay, I don't want to do stocks. What can I do? I, I live in the village or I, or I want to have that exposure to diversify my portfolio. That's where we're actually coming from this week. So yes, NGX is very, very good. If you're a younger person, you want to do that as well. But we're trying to also give new ideas, you know, where we haven't gone to uh, in, in the past. I, I'm not sure if doctor has any issue on the in, on the port side. You know, if you want to speak on the port side, the, the blockages there and all that. I mean, it's apparent. Even if we grow the the dwarf coconut and the palm and all that, if we can't export it, we're, we're wasting our time, aren't we? Do you know, you know, when we talk about this export and uh, all those stuff, do you know that even the coconut oil, the coconut oil is so expensive here in Nigeria that you will not even need to export it. It's even more profitable to sell it to the end users here than to export. The challenge we have is the issue of, like I said, there are factors of production. But the most important factor of production here is the human capital. You know, outside even the government um, inefficiencies, the issue of human fidelity, having the right people who will take your money and not tell you stories. You know, Carlo, you know this thing we always say, oh, our politicians are thieves, they are criminals. I always say to anybody who cares for this thing, the majority of Nigerians will be worse than the politicians if given the same space. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. Because we see it in everyday life. People want to cut corners, people want to cheat you, people will not want to take what belongs to you. But there are still very honest Nigerians. Very, very honest. I'll give you an example. There was a time we decided, you know this we talk about logistics, you talk about storage. You know, I hear it, I laugh. And let me tell you, a typical experience, Carlo. Early this year, I and one of my friends, a director in CBA, decided to try it. Carlo, I bought a 20 toner truck, a Tokumba Fiat with storage facilities to enable me to move Yam from Benue to Mato, from Boko to Lagos State. The first trip that we went, we loaded that 20 toner with tomato. We decided to go to Enugu first because there was a market in that. I, I know that Enugu market, the tomato market is so lucrative. We loaded that tomato in Boko. Carlo, from Boko to Soka, we encountered maybe about two or three checkpoints. But immediately we got to Soka, you saw police checkpoint. In fact, in, the guy practically, driver practically spent all the money he had in his attempt to escape one of the police checkpoints his Azu entered into a ditch and we lost Azu of that truck and we lost everything because that truck did not get to Enugu at last time for this and all the tomatoes got destroyed Charlo, the second one was the yam that one we invested 14 million to move with 3,000 tomatoes of yam from Benue to Aja in Le uh, in Lagos State. We cut the all the storage spot on Carlo. Mm -hmm. Everything we stored the yams. People were coming from mainland to come and buy it in 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 bulk distributors. The second night, our security men, I don't know what happened, they fell asleep. They brought a truck and carried 11,000 tubas of yam. They've already gone before the security men wake up. What they did on how what happened, Carl, to today, we've not recovered that money. So, you can understand these things. You, there are many things. And the, Carl, we ran the numbers. The model was so sweet. We are supposed to even double our money. We had security men in place, three, in the, at the same time. But we never factored in that security men can fall asleep. 
Mm. And the 11,000 tuba staking without anybody knowing, at dead of the night. Which is not, which is, I, I, I get the starter in what you're saying. But I mean, I mean it's, um, people, are human beings honest or the system makes them honest? Because even in, in America, I did a lot of stealing, people go to warehouse and clear it out. But I think the impunity and the scale, maybe in Nigeria, is maybe what makes it different. I mean, people are talking about, you are talking about an entire warehouse of yam stolen. You know, where, where was it then sold? And then, now, do, do you know what for it? I just say, you now go to you now go to police to lodge a complaint. <laughs> Carlo, it's another thing. See, Carlo, when the justice administrative system is not there, you know there are times. Okay, I will now. Okay, like the one that happened in Ohanze, Carlo, I will leave my business in Lagos. Every two weeks, I'll be going to court. I'll be flying to my. You know what is the flight ticket? By the time I do it ten times, I've actually lost the money on flight tickets. True. That. <laughs> you, know, you ask yourself this good. But where the justice and the system is working, two, three months, you get your justice and it will be at a deterrence to the next criminal. The same guy that did the same thing to us. There are reports that there are some other three guys from Germany that he collected money from the same thing and he ate their money. Hmm. And you will see him driving around. Going to church to go and give testimonies. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. That is the kind of country we run. You know, you know, can when we talk about foreign direct investment, I say it with every sense of responsibility. If we have a physical and justice administrative system that works in Nigeria, Carlo, Nigerians in diaspora. Can easily inflow fifty to hundred billion dollar every year for investment in diverse sectors. Okay. Can, have you not heard the story about about a guy that sent money for them to build house for him in his village, <laughs> and they were going to snap pictures of other houses somewhere? Many times, many times. And the guy now comes back to come and see his house and goes to the port. The person that did the thing will disappear. Police will say they did not see him. The guy will wait out. Okay, stay in Nigeria and I'll be waiting for me. One month after, the guy will sign and he will go back. If we have a, an, a, a, a system that works, where such person is captured, prosecuted and jailed without even him becoming a source of revenue for police, we won't be where we are today. Gotcha. Let me, Ugochuko, did you have a comment? You, you seem to be intrigued by the discussion. Okay, um, good evening from here, Carlo. Good evening, Dr. Oberi. Um, I don't know, I don't know whether I should be grateful for joining this call today because I think I'm living, I'm living here with some mixed feelings. Um, uh, doctor, you have broken things down for a lot of us that are here in Nigeria. We know how things work. Um, I joined when you were talking about your investment in um, EDA, or I think so that you lost um, due to communal clashes. Incidentally, I'm in the East right now. We are supposed to have a meeting in Africa community where we want to invest in 100 hectare land for palm plantation. So when I heard about Eda and I was like, I think it's God that's trying to save me from this calamity. Because if I haven't joined this, um, this, this, this call this night, Probably tomorrow I would have headed to a few but to go and conclude. So maybe I should just pack my bag, enter the next flight tomorrow and go back to Lagos. I mean, um, Nigeria is a place where it gives you opportunity with the right hand and takes it away with the left hand. Exactly. Everything, everything you have said here is very, very clear. Um, people want to make investments, but the investments are not guaranteed. I mean, one can imagine the kind of money you have spent making investment, even where you are as you came from, and you are not able to protect those investments. So you can imagine someone that is that is not even from there and going to make those investments. What guarantee does the person have? I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. And you have said it all. If the judicial system is not top-notch, and I mean, I went to Cross River State when I was looking for uh, land too. Every kilometer you see, every kilometer you pass, you see people 
see all manner of uniforms, people crossing the roads, people blocking the roads, security agencies blocking roads, or uniform, uniform men, you know, with all manner of things thrown on the road, collecting check to collecting tolls, every check every every everywhere is a toll toll plaza. I mean, how can you do business in those kind of environments? It's difficult, very difficult. I mean, what do you do? You can't with what uh, forex you're doing now. What other business do you want to do? They say go go and do agriculture. I I tried to do. I did I did hundred hectares of, of rice farm in Benue, and and lost everything because of of headsmen. They killed someone in the farm. Everybody ran away. Everybody was blown by weeds before uh, the the flood that came and carried the rest. One so, one hundred hectares. Yes, we lost everything. They killed, they killed two Fulani, two uh, Fulani killed security men in the farm, and then they killed one Fulani man, man, and everybody ran away for two months. We couldn't uh, approach the farm. In fact, when we even got there, that was the Benue Lower Lower River Lower River Benue uh, Authority. The, the we had they, they had military men on that side before we went in, but when this thing happened, we we're asking them what happened. They said, "Look, they can't, they can't do anything." In fact, they left. They left, they left the place. So it's difficult without security, without a uh, 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 judicial system that guarantees you um, results within a, a very quick period. I mean, there's nothing you can do that you have any guarantee. So mm. honestly, it's, it's quite tough. You know, like you said, if I have, have a lot of friends outside that are looking you know, towards, say, okay, what do we do? What do we do? But when you look at the whole gamut of our system, it's difficult to encourage anybody to bring in funds because you can't guarantee anything. You can move in, but what do you bring out? You don't know. You know so honestly, I, I I don't know. But Doc, I'll speak with you after. I have spoken with you before on what I wanted to get from you. In fact, when I came in and I saw you, I said, well, this must be a very interesting uh, uh, listening. And, and as I came in, you were talking about what happened. What happened to your farm? I mean, how could people be that that disturbed to go and burn a farm that is growing? How can someone do that? Why would someone do that? You know, it's very unfortunate. But that is just that. Thank you. Interesting, Doug. I mean, you, you do a one hundred hectare rice farm, and it dis- yes. yeah, it disappears it's and. Yes. We are we are wondering why inflation is thirty percent. Food inflation is thirty percent because there, there, there's no there's no supply, no supply. So if we don't fix insecurity, you know, I, I've said this before on the previous space to the to the president. There are only Nigeria only has two problems. Only two problems. Number one is the export of crude oil to Niger Delta, which is the security problem, not an oil problem. Number two is the insecurity inside Nigeria allowing food not to be created that's why you have high food inflation if you stop food inflation going up interest rates come down why we cannot address this i'm not truly really aware i'm not truly really aware yeah uh, sorry about that, ugo bad experience there i mean if you imagine if you borrowed that money or that money was given to you to trade with what would you tell the people what would you say so it's crazy crazy uh tobe chuku tobe how you doing ugo thanks yes Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I just wanted to digress a little bit, but um, I don't know, it's kind of a question, but also a, it's an investment. Uh, it, has, it has something to do with investment, but it's, it's not on the agricultural side. And I wanted to make, uh, you know, based on this current uh, the, the Bitcoin halving that is coming up, you know, why I'm bringing it up is because in 2020, I personally know you know, people that uh, um, talking about the Bitcoin halving and the effect it has on Bitcoin and uh, how the halving creates a kind of an artificial scarcity that then drives up the demand and the price of the crypto. Mm. You know? So, and this is, and the, according to the, uh, this thing, that the next Bitcoin halving is also going to be this year. Mm. You know, and the projections are really, really uh, saying that it's going to ramp up the price, mm. you know, just as it has done in 2020 and how it did in 2016. And you know, let, 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 let me say this 
let, let, let me say this to you, Ugo. Toby, 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 I get your question. Let, let me answer it this way. In, in finance and investing, there's a law called efficient market theory. What it says is that if everybody knows that the price of oranges will go up by 10% on Monday, then the price of oranges will not go up by 10% on Monday. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Why? Because everybody knows. So if I know the price will go up, I'll buy it on Saturday. <laughs> and if I don't buy on Monday, the price cannot go up. So this Bitcoin halving, the theory is true. But because everybody knows there's, a, there's an actual date for it, an actual date that's going to happen. So what do you think the boys in Wall Street are doing? What do you think the boys in Wall Street, in Singapore, in Dubai, what do you think they are doing? They've taken positions now well, well, well before. So anybody that is going to buy Bitcoin because he says that the price will go to X or Y, on a particular date, huh. that guy is no, not, not a. Place. Yeah, he doesn't. Doesn't. Does yeah, I mean because the, yeah. the price. You, what you are saying, everyone knows it. Yeah. It's not. A, everybody knows what you are saying. That it's going to be halved. Yeah. yeah. And now there's a Bitcoin spot ETF. So somebody's going to somebody's going to manipulate that whole transaction. It will not happen well, the way you you, you say. Well, it's going I'm to saying happen. this is because it happened exactly the same way in the, 2020. This is why yeah, they now, always say yeah. in finance. Past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. They always say it in finance. I mean, it could happen the way you are saying. Don't get me wrong. It could happen. But can you take your house rent and bet on this? No, for instance, when I'm talking from a very, I'm talking from a big investment standpoint. For instance, uh, instance right now, I know some people that that are investing in Bitcoin mining machines. In Bro, I'm, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not, you know, I'm not said. You are right or wrong. All I'm saying is that efficient market theory says that if everybody knows the price of orange will rise on Monday morning, if everybody knows this, Monday morning by 9 a.m. The, the it's, not, it's not that halving, that halving date, eh? Mr. Carlo, that halving date is not the date it rises. That halving date, what, what happens is that those that are mining Bitcoin if you're mining right now, you can mine at the rate of uh, as high as one ninety five uh, th. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 you are getting technical. The point I'm making okay, is this: let me, let me the, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Let, we have to move on. The point I'm making is yeah. this: people know what you are saying. It's not a secret. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, efficient exactly. market says that if everybody knows what you are saying, then everyone's going to take a position. It's called dead man's gamble. If two of us know something, if two of yeah. us know something, then both of us cannot make a profit off it because yeah, both of getting, us know it. I think you're getting something wrong. I'm not I'm sure, not but let me explain it. but I know whether you're getting it wrong. Are you, are you, are you, in your understanding, are you saying that the, because Bitcoin is not, that date of the halving is not the day. It the doesn't matter. Okay, what I'm saying is that halving is going to happen yeah. in when, when will it have happen? Well, April, uh, okay, so but you know it, I know it, doctor knows it, everybody in Nigeria, US, America, Mexico knows it. That's what I'm yeah. telling you. So Carlo, efficient market Carlo, says, no, doctor, Carlo, it doesn't Carlo, matter. It, everybody Carlo, knows what, what, it. What, what? Carlo, what, what, what are you saying now is like an anticipated stock split. That's what he's saying. <laughs> I, I, and I'm explaining that. <laughs> it, they, they make it look as if it's a technical thing. It's a stock no, split. It's, it's a bonus. It's a bonus share. No, no, no. It's actually it's because if you're mining Bitcoin today, it, let me, you, let me you are being technical, Oga. Okay. Oga, okay, we know these things you are saying. You're not I giving know. us anything new. That, that's what I'm saying. Don't hear me out so that you understand. Let me let me round up. You understand? The, if you buy a, if you buy a Bitcoin mining machine today, and you're mining, okay, at the rate of one ninety five, okay. Um, by that on that day, the halving means that you're going to start mining at half of that one ninety five. Okay. So every, every Bitcoin miner that was mining at, for example, two hundred, is going to start mining at hundred. Okay. That is what the halving. Okay, is. but what you just said now, I can Google it and I'll show you the exact same thing you said now with the exact yes. same date. So, I'm answering you by telling you that in under efficient market hypothesis, if you and I know something, 
in the stock market or in any market if you and i know that fuel price is going to go up tomorrow you and i know it npc knows i know then the price movement will not happen according to demand and supply anymore because there's full market information that's what i'm saying i'm not saying the price to go I, up I, or I, not I, I, I can't look. And Carlo, no one person has monopoly of buying the mining machine. This is the thing now. Everybody, so, so the, the boys in um, in Singapore, you think they are waiting for you? The boys in New York, they are waiting for you. That's the point I'm making to make you. So it's not a secret because it's not it's a not secret. A they will take exactly. positions. Carlo, 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 let me let me give you what is the secret. Are you guys aware that after the evolution of Nigeria, Naira? That the top five banks declared over two trillion profits. Okay. What do you, what do you think happened? You think because they have not anybody? They got prior information. It's, it was alleged that they got tipped off, and so they took positions against the naira. If every other person in Nigeria knew that the CBN was going to devalue the naira the way they did. It took no, 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 no. if, if, if I have an LC of twenty million dollars, all I would have done was to look for the nearest dollar to buy elsewhere and liquidate it. But most people were not aware; they were still believing that the market would remain the way it is and trade out. But those who were aware, close, allegedly aware, close their position. position. Now they are declaring trillion naira profit, whereas the companies who are into real sector production. <laughs> Like Guinness, negative, like Nestle, negative shareholders like are declaring losses. So, if the information was very open, Nestle would have liquidated their dollar position, GSK would have done that, but it wasn't open. So, those who got allegedly got the fillers liquidated. So, when, when an information is open, nobody gets Tobe, gets caught. Tobe, you are still hands on your hands up. Tobe, if you, yeah, yeah. Tobe, people are betting. Yeah. This is a final last word to you. People bet, people yeah. do gamble and they bet, right? If you yeah. know tomorrow that yeah. Chelsea and Arsenal will play 2-2, two -two, you know, 2-2 two -two draw. If you go to the yeah. betting house, what would be the odds? Zero. Yeah, uh -huh, now. So what were I telling you now? But look, at, look at this. No, no, no. Bye, bye, let, 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 no, no, go, go. Take it. The effect, Take of, it. Scarcity. The effect of scarcity. Oh. Take it. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Carlo, and uh, excellent space as always. Um, and I've been laughing my, I've been laughing and crying at the same time simultaneously, if it, if you can imagine that. Um, but I think a lot of investors here that are listening to this uh, are used to that, uh, phenomenon. Um, and listening to Oga, OBR, uh, uh, Eri, you know, the, the space and listening to him do not jive. He's, he's telling us the opposite of everything this space is supposed to be talking about. Uh, and I have my own horror stories, uh, plentiful. Uh, and somebody, uh, Oga Haruna here can maybe confirm one of these, my stories of, you know, investing in an agro business, hoping to yield more than 20%. But at least I walked away with 10% of my, my investment on that, um, on, in less than a year. So I can at least be grateful for that. But, Sir, Mr. Um, Emeka, if you can give us, apart from, apart from, give us some good size of the, of, of your stories, of your experience that are practical, are practicable today that people can, you know, investigate and see if it's, they are brave enough to go into something that we can latch on to, uh, before we leave this space because some of your stories are obviously not even close as bad as I have experienced, but um, it, it, it sends chills down my spine. And some, my logic is this, so understand where I'm coming from and why I'm interested in this, even though I'm in the diaspora. Yes, I'm in the diaspora, but I find myself in the last 10 to um, last 10 years or more always spending an average of five to 10 million naira for multiple reasons. And I said to myself prior to COVID, why on earth do I spend this money every time knowing that this bill is coming my way? Why don't I just put that five to 10 million naira in Nigeria? Let him be doing his work and doing something that will make sense. So by the time I say, okay, I need that 10 million or five million 
or three million for whatever reason I usually spend that money on. I can withdraw it from an investment I've made into Nigeria. That way I'm not worrying myself about exchange rate and all that craziness that goes on with the, the, um, the, the, the markets, you know. And that's the way the logic is coming from. I have disposable three, one, three to five million every year. I always use Nigerian space. Where can I put this money in? I know that at least it will be there with some interest so that when I need to use it, I can use it within that year. I've tried okay. multiple things and they've burnt me badly. Yeah, take it, take it. Before, okay. no, no, talk okay. to you, okay. you, you okay. can't do four. Okay. Uh, let, 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 let me share with you because you are very, very correct. They are, like I said, it's not uh, always a te- tales of war. There are some good points. I will give you two examples. I Four things that you can do. Like I said, it also boils down to human beings and fidelity. Like, while in the course of my research work, you know, this agreed thing, I met one Chinese ambassador. And the guy told me a chilly story that shocked me. The guy said, on an honor business that they consume about fifty-four billion dollar worth of pork in China, seven billion comes from America. The guy in that sense of they said in West Africa, I didn't even know that they have huge Chinese population in Niger and Chad. In fact, they, they said they have more Chinese in Niger and Chad than in Nigeria. That most of the pork that they import are from Brazil, not even from Nigeria. Now the guy began to give me experience of what the kind of pork they need. In fact, they don't even allow their pork to be very, very old. It must, they slaughtered, they like, they like the meat brittle. You know, pork is like their staple food. So I decided, okay, I asked him, he told me the guys, the Dura 78, the large white, the kind of things that we should do. So I'm always very adventurous when it comes to that. So we decided to set up to do two settlements. One in my village in Okiwe, one in Portacot. Uh, through one of my very trusted uh, relations. Now, the one in Okiwa was doing very, very well. Though. We just got piglets. But of course, the piglets were responding well. We provided them with the water and everything. But that one in Okiwa, like I, like I said, one night, some very hungry. There is hunger in this land, though. It's not as if they stole it, though. Some young men, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about adult pigs. I'm talking about pigs that were about 10, 16 weeks old. They entered their butcher some of the of the pig, carry the carcasses to go and eat. And they were even bold enough to write and drop and say, Oh God, we are hungry. We just need to carry the meat. But the one in Portacourt, which is a bit safer, the guy is making money. You know what it means? Minting money. Like the large white produces twice in a year, even sometimes three times. And when it litters, like it's called, it litters about, if I start with about 11 souls, about 16, about 18. And the demand for pork in, in, in the abats or in Portacote alone, they slaughter about 500 pigs every day. That one is very lucrative. And beyond even selling the, the meat, the, he sells the pig poo he digests it and he makes so much money from the pig poo and of course, what he uses to feed them are vegetables and then palm kernel shafts that are gotten from most of the palm kernel factories um, along that Aba and Patakot axis. The second one was this same young business, the one that we lost in Lagos. There was the one in Patakot succeeded because there was a very honest girl, one Esther lady. She's a married girl with three children. In fact, in fact, one of my managers that traveled out to Netherlands packed one of her F-15 trucks with her. And she was using it. She, you could see the honesty. Her report was so excellent. In fact, at a time when she stored most of the yams, and she discovered that the yams were you know, not getting fresh as she used to be, she decided rather allow the yam to spoil. She went to a mini factory and turned the yam into powder, yam flour, and sold it and made more money. Because she was honest, she was down to earth. You could see somebody who has character. So, like the boy in Portacourt is minting money. There are areas you can go to, but it boils down to who is the person that is responsible for it. That pork meat is that fact. As I'm talking, there's a particular guy, a lawyer I know in Ibarra here. That's what he does. He said from the day he left law school. 
that is what he does. He has almost about 2,000 of it. He sells the meat. In fact, the manure alone, what he did was that if you go there, outside the town, he dug trenches where he washes the pig poo-poo. Farmer sits, um, there's a machine he uses to do it and sell it as liquid organic fertilizer over time. Every day I see him, I say, oh, God, when they are doing law conference, it does not go. He said, I am not a lawyer. I'm not a pig farmer. The guy is minting money in Abada. So there are areas you can, like, the, the, like that is an area that most people don't even understand. That pig farming is a very, very lucrative farming. But you also need to get somebody you trust. That will, and, the, and the mortality rate is very, very low. <laughs> they, they survive. Anything that can kill, of course, you know, there was a time they had serious um, uh, uh, issue in China. There are pigs we are dying. Afri the ones in the Afri China, African, as much. African swine yes. flu. African swine flu. So later, when I was asking the guy what he did, you know, there are certain things people do. The guy told me, there was something he told me, this he normally mixes for his pigs, the guy in Portacot, and all that things that he does for the that, that he had the better, but at least he, the, the guy advised him, look at herbs. They are that boost their immune system. And it is rare for you to hear that he has lost pigs to either this or that. So there are good stories of my brother. It's not as if everything is not bad. But I can tell you, the ones in my village was doing so well. Just like some hungry boys out of hunger, this unknown government went there and ate some of the meat. So I abandoned that one because it because you don't rear really pig where human beings live. We we took the pig pen outside where it will not because of environmental issues. So there are there's another guy too. We gave three and a half plot of land in Okiwe that is into poultry farm. He does poultry. He does um Kelechi Wim guy like that's his name. I like mentioning that people can always verify. The guy does poultry, the guy does talking and he's doing so so well. You know, so there are good stories, my brother. It's, everything is not all about doom and all those stories. There are many there are very honest people in Nigeria. But the, the challenge now is getting those honest people like the Estas, like the Kelechis and like the other guy to, to run things for you. Okay, right. question for you. Can I do pig farming with one million naira? Yes, of course. How, like how would it work? Do you, do you have schematics? How many can I buy? Can you just yes, this? you can you can buy like, like the Duran, the the large white. We bought the large white ten. Oh, that was about three years ago. We bought the large white ten of them for five hundred k. Ten for five hundred k. Yeah, and I after I, I I can't do it where people live. I have to go far away and do it more or less. No, you you, you can't do it. We are. You can we don't uh, we don't even advise that okay all right good you can, uh, yeah and, and take i mean when he started we did ask him for specifics that's why we talk about the seedlings i don't know if you were here back then when he started we talked about the three seedlings the cocoa the palm and he gave those specifics and that was always had it back and forth about if it could be done with one millionaire and all that so he did give specifics but we, he then talked about his own experience just wanted to make that uh, point there uh mayor mayor duke t oh take it take it take it did you have a uh, you only yeah, yes sir yes sir sorry and and, and and definitely i missed that part so i, I apologize yeah i'll definitely go back and um what uh, read uh, listen to the recording to make sure i get everything mr obiora is your dm open can people contact you directly of course it's open okay thank you sir when you pull make all okay. the money please send us our 10 percent please <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've been begging, I've been no, begging your friend Haruna to allow me to do business with him. Yeah, Haruna is, is a big man. Allow Haruna yeah, to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't have Haruna's money. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, you don't have problem. Take care. You 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 will, you will meet up. Even if it is ten percent, take care. It's reliable. You will meet up. Haruna, how is the farm? How is the farm in the northeast? How how are things happening? What's going on? Anything we should know? Be aware of. Nothing. Uh, you just thank God. Yeah. Uh, security issues are getting are getting a little bit bad. More than worse than we think of. We have encroachment of uh, bandits, kidnappers. And then you have problem with security. There are some guy in the land. Oh. No problem, you know? and so on and so forth. And we are looking forward to a very profitable farming year. With the little we could harvest, we're going to harness and make sure we have maximum return on our investment. Mm. We're targeting 70 to 90% return on investment. Wow. Due to the high cost of uh, of production now. 
you know, the cost of diesel, cost mm. of uh, maintaining your plants, cost of security around the farms to avoid stealing and strain of cows. So all these things add up to it to to the cost of production. Well, I, I have good news for you. I have good news for you. The Dangote refinery has started to produce diesel. Do you think that they will give us diesel at once? Carlo, Carlo, the price, um, Carlo, the price will not come down. Carlo, let me tell you. I'm just let saying. Me no. <laughs> Carlo, Carlo, listen. Let, let me let me explain to us why it will not solve the Why not? <laughs> Carlo, Carlo, listen. Most of the let us face fact. Dangote refinery will not even take the price. He cannot. He can't even compete with the refineries in Azerbaijan, in Kazakhstan, that are actually conduits for Russian diesels. He cannot compete. Will he be able to give this count of hundred dollars per, per, per metric ton? Now we're gonna leave that in our bag. Well, let's 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 wait in prayer. Let's let's do it in prayer. So <laughs> that's what we know. How to do that. Yeah, prayer. Are you talking on? Yeah. <laughs> May God help us. Amen. I mean, because yeah, there's nothing else to do. There is really nothing else to say. Again, you know, um, to, on Twitter, there's a sad case where crowdfunding for a man that lost his or her, his his daughters are with kidnappers. You know, you read that and there's something in you dies. You know, I wish I had the money to give the man to get his his case case back. But then I'm I'm wondering. That we're going to a level where the population is crowdfunding to pay criminals. The, secu- the security services, they are tagging a senator. The, the, sec- the army, navy, police. Kad- this, Kaduna has any security apparatus you mentioned in Nigeria is in Kaduna. Any. Abuja is the city of the capital. So it's like driving from Washington to Virginia and you are kidnapped. That road, that road, how long is that road from Kaduna to Abuja? You can't drive on that road. So, all that bush on the side, you can't farm there now because that you can't farm there. So, a progressive nation would have converted that entire farmland on both sides to farmland so that bandits can hide. Carlo, 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 you're going far. Carlo, let me tell you. Carlo, you're going far. Carlo, we know what, you know, you know what I told you? Carlo, you see that place, eh? The space of land between Kano, uh, between Abuja and Kaduna, can comfortably contain fifty to hundred thousand hectares of the hybrid deep plantation. I wonder is is not like he knows what I'm talking about. Clusters of forty each. In each of these clusters, have motorized farm rangers, twenty five fully armed. Government is not paying them. Let me tell you. A, 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 a hectare of date plantation after the fifth sixty it gives you about twenty tons of date foods. A ton of date food today is about a thousand eight hundred dollars. Go and check it. Even the price have done, dropped. From every hectare you generate enough money. From every cluster you generate enough money to pay the families. Carlo, if you have hundred thousand hectares of palm plantation along that axis broken down into clusters of 40, 40 divided 100,000. And each cluster has 25 motorized armed rangers who sleep there day and night. There is no bandit anywhere that will come close near that road. But they won't do it. They, they, can't, they, they have no intention of stopping this madness. The bandits How want jobs. The, the bandits want jobs. If you, you, know, if you create... Problem. Have an ATM that doesn't have a pin. Ha! Huh. Wow! Wow! It's crazy. I mean, I it's weak oh, because even now you go on Twitter, I, I, they said they've killed one of the of the daughters. I don't. I don't know, man. It's it's. I just pray for that for that man. I don't know how he gets out of this, but I assure you that because we've done crowdfunding, I assure you, and I'm just. It, it's sad to say this, but it's going to go up because they're going to say, okay, go and crowdfund. For the next one, they're gonna kidnap. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, go ahead, sir. Mayor, Mayor of is, is it was Mayor Duke, please go ahead, sir. Uh, Mayor, your audio is very low. Your, your audio is not that sound. Could you fix it? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, please go ahead. Um, um, good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to. 
you to, 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 to listen to your talk, your discussions, and I've learned a great deal. Although I entered this, I entered this, but from the two I heard about agriculture, it's 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 really really it's really so it's really I, I'm very very happy. I throughout I've just been I've just been at, at this point listening to you guys. I'm very very grateful for that. Okay, so last year around um, my point last year around um, September, I did, uh, I had some money on me. At, at that point in time, I was not, I was not working. I had some I had good money on me, which I said okay instead of using that money to do. Instead of using that money to buy clothes, uh, using that money to within of wasting the money, let me invest into business like agriculture, a uh, poultry farm. Of which poultry farm is something that my father really, really buy. Of which poultry, uh, running, running on bed, it's something my father really, really, really uh, imposed uh, uh, impose in us. In, 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 in my, my, my siblings and I. Yeah, me, me. I want to go to the. Mayo, get, 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 can you get to the okay, question if you don't okay, mind, sir? So, yes. Okay, 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 okay. I invest. I, I dropped. I put in uh, close to. I put in close to four hundred thousand naira into poultry business and broilers for uh, broilers and and um, I I bought about forty beds and gave them quality. Their food were, were top notch. I was buying the best feed for them. Yeah, yeah. The cleaning of their, the cleaning of their. Cage was done properly every two days, every three days. I ensure that they are, they are, they are, the way they stay is always neat and aerated. Then the water was clean. May I was the May I was What was the question? Uh, um, I don't know. I just, I don't, I just don't know. I, oh, I didn't make. I had a loss on the on the on the on the, on the, on the poultry farm. I just don't know. I want to understand what I could have done better. Hmm. That's why. That's why. That's why. I, I'm not sure if Har- I don't know if Harna or Obiere can help, but you know, you know, loss means you have more expenses than income. Yeah. That's what loss means. So yeah, it's yeah. either just on a general level, it's either you didn't sell enough or you had high costs. So it's one of them. No, my bed, my, my bed, that like I, uh, I think about twenty, uh, about fifteen of my beds died. Oh. I to, and they died at the, at the point in time when they were about to be killed, like. Christmas period. So you lost. Uh, so you you you, you, you lost. Matches. You lost assets. You couldn't uh, monetize yeah. your assets. Yeah. That's a different matter entirely. Yeah. You yeah. might want to bring in yeah. an expert on hygiene. You know because hygiene of the farm. And you know you do step on the liquid that disinfects your shoes. All that kind of stuff. You want to talk to really an expert that would come to your farm and advise you. It could be something you are doing and you don't know what you're doing. I hear you say it's aerated and all that, but. You might want to go maybe go, go to a university, okay. get a, get a professor okay. that understands these things as an expert. Take him to your farm. You know, spend that small money and say, if this thing happened, my bed's died, what have I done wrong? That thing is the best thing to do. So you don't you don't guess again. If you're investing in this coming year, you, you have gotten uh-huh. approached now to look at it. That's what I would advise. Uh, okay, but I, 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 I the fear that the fear the fear of loss of bed last year really really puts me. It's really, I was, uh, it's, it's, it's really, it hooks me. I, I, I was, I was depressed throughout December. Even the Christmas, I was, even the Christmas celebrations, I was totally depressed. Well, he that, he, that he, you're welcome, sir. He that, he that, you know, you you only fail when you refuse to stand up, right? That's what they always say in motivational talks, Abby. So even when you are down, you haven't yet failed. So only when you say, okay, I'm going to stay down. That's when you feel. So I would advise that you know get expert help. All, what you have now is experience. Now you know what you you've got in this experience. So going forward, you are starting from zero, which means if you make one, you've made a hundred percent. So start from there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about your losses, but you you you'll, you'll, be, you'll come back and tell us a good testimony. I know that. All right. Thank yeah, you, sir. Sure. All right, Millie Shield. Yeah, welcome. So we've got about twenty minutes left, guys. So I can let Mr. Obiara. Right. He's been with us for close to thirty minutes, thirty uh, three hours. I've been asking him about the Nigerian economy, wealth creation, investment options. We've gone through a lot. We've gone through, he's talking about the economy of Nigeria. He's talking about the issues, the structural issues with Nigeria, why he thinks that we're not well set up. He's also given us his own take on where he thinks the government should focus on and even where we as, if we have a millionaire, where we can start to put 
um, more or less money into the economy's economy itself and and progress. So, Millie Shield, please go ahead and I have a few questions on DM. Um, Mr. B, Mr. B, on DM, they're asking you a question. I'll ask you after Millie Chen speaks. Please go ahead, Millie Shield. Hello, good evening, everybody. Nice to be here again. Uh, I've been on the space for about two hours. I've learned a whole lot from the major speaker and I've learned a whole lot from all other speakers. My take here now is Nigerians that has liquid cash with them. Sorry to say, but I'm not sorry either. We, you have to start looking at other countries where it's safe for you to invest your money. I want to tell you, I have been understudying Ghana for about two years now. The agricultural ecosystem there. During my study, I found out that there are a lot of Nigerians that are investing in agriculture in Ghana. One of the major reasons that they are becoming successful in what they are doing over there is one the currency is fairly stable i've been studying their currency for the past one year now and i've been doing comparison online people will come around and say that oh ghana renominated their money yeah they did the denomination right but if the currency stays at eight between 850 and 870 for a whole six month period it didn't go as far as 10 or 11 like nigeria own went from say like 500 to 1000 in the past six months or 1000 plus right so the currency is fairly stable that is one two there is no security issue in ghana at all i was watching a video from ghana about three days ago the minister of agriculture there went to visit a farm i was checking for the outfit of the security that came with her it was only one ak-47 i saw in the entry all other police were carrying pistol by their waist that is security in nigeria go and check our uh, uh ministers or government you will see a whole entourage of security operative those wearing suits those wearing uniform they may even go with them with armor tank and different kind of gun that shows the level of security and ghana is number two safest country in the whole africa as of last year after mauritius then number three ghana with my studies they have a very robust export uh, uh, department that handles that takes care of exports of agri produce from Ghana to foreign countries. And uh, the land over there, you can lease your land, say 300 Ghana cities per acre for five years. You can as well buy, but the buy is like if you are a foreigner, you buy for 50 years, then you can renew in a year, it's 99 years for indigents. I don't know how they sell for foreigners, but in Ghana, you can buy for 50 years if you want to do outright buying. Uh, uh, Nigerians should start looking at other countries. Look at Kenya, look at Uganda. Then I want to say again that whatever you want to invest in, please spend a lot of time in coding. That is books, videos, YouTube. Do a lot of studies. Like the, the person that spoke last about is broiler. What is is uh, knowledge bank like in raising broiler? Uh, thank you, Mr. Carl. You spoke about bow security. If your bow security is not good, somebody might bring disease from another farm onto your farm. So your bow security should be top notch. 
Thank you so much, everybody. I shared on the Jumbotron uh, group of Nigerians that I established hectares of corn farm in Ghana. They have poultry. These boys are Nigerians. They came from the U.S. to Ghana. They did not come to Nigeria. They came all the way from the U.S. to Ghana. I shared the YouTube video on the Jumbotron. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. And just to clarify, when you say look at other countries, what do you mean by look at? Just to be clear, just just to be clear. Uh, like 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 me, in the past two years, I've been undertoding the agricultural space in Ghana because I have the intention of retiring on the farm. So look at other countries means go and understudy them. Gotcha. You can do it, you can do it online without having to visit. It was my uh it was my, during my studies i started contacting a lot of youtubers in ghana i started contacting a lot of farmers in ghana i started contacting a lot of lawyers that are into property uh. in ghana so it it's it, it increases my knowledge bank about ghana that if i arrive ghana today i know where to go and i know what to do Gotcha. So good, good, good point. You want to do, spend a lot of time studying it. Don't believe what somebody wants to hand over to you. That ah, I'm going to do it for you. You're going to make a lot of profit. Now nah, lie most of the time. Do your own independent studies, and it's not necessarily means that if you have 50 million, 100 million, you must invest it in Nigeria. I will not even advise any foreigner. I mean, any Nigerian in diaspora to take money to Nigeria to invest. Because, it, okay, for example, I took $10,000 loan. I just use this as an example. About six months ago, I took $10,000 loan to buy a car to ship to Nigeria, right? That, that is one of the business I do, right? Now, the $10,000 was at 600 to one Canadian dollar at that time. So it takes about eight weeks six to eight weeks for the car to get to my house in lagos right by the time we put this car in the market we sold this car we gained 10 percent which is about six hundred thousand. now i wanted to convert my money back to an indian dollar so that i can pay back the line of credit i took this money from guess what i'm in debt of 2.5 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing, Oga. Okay? That's that, 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 that's what they call exchange Carlo. loss. <laughs> Carlo. 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 The guy who bought Carlo. card is in loss. <laughs> Doctor, Carlo. please go, uh, advise him. You see, you see what what this guy, the last speaker. Here, what's that his name again? Um, Mili. Mili, sir, he's Mili. still here. He's, he's he says he's the best uh, bricklayer. Uh, he says he's the largest bricklayer in, in Nigeria. This day, this thing you said now broke my heart. I'm in, I see I, 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 I am heartbroken. You see, now, Carlo, can you, Carlo, can you see? This is a young man. Who He's not young, young though. Carlo, whether, 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 see, old or young. This, this, this is a man. This is a Nigeria. I got you. Just... Who loved, who loved this country so much? He took a loan. That he wanted to, you know, you know, I said this thing. You know, when we talk about diaspora remittances, oh, 25 million dollars, billion. I said, I can I said, these 25 billion dollars we talked about is chicken change compared to what the average Nigerian can do. I know a medical doctor. Can let me give you an example. You know, after Roach has left as go Roach has left as governor, Roach has used 26 carcasses. To loot 29 billion out of him state. He said he was going to build Jara hospitals. He left 26 carcasses and took 29 billion out of him state. Hmm. These guys are medical doctors. The guy that leads them is from South Africa. There are about 800 of them. Mostly we say over uh, Axis. These guys came. Emeka Hedra was governor then before Emeka was removed. They came with a lofty idea. If you go throughout the whole of Imo State, there's no the only medical center in Imo State that has some resemblance of anything what is F F M C. And F M C is, is nothing compared to anything you can see in any place that is decent. We got a group. I mentioned to you about one Israeli group, El Smed. They supply hospital equipment to the Apollo group. Most of the places Nigerians go to India for medical tourism. 
those guys supplied the equipment there. And we brought an arrangement. They said in Imo or Kigwe, they will take one of those carcasses. They will take from Molo. They will take one from Mogore. These boys were willing to put down their own money. The most state government value this asset. Give it to us. If it is, if you say, Rocha say it is one billion, but we don't think it's not worth up to 200 million. Value it. We will pay over 30 years. Provide us with security. We will turn each of these carcasses into decent secondary health institution that is better than FMC. The estimate guys are producing, bringing equipment worth $10 million. These guys are bringing their own equivalent of them. They're going to borrow this money to set up these hospitals, which they will manage with the Israelis in the most excellent... If I'm supposed to be create medical tourism center in Imo State for the whole of the Southeast, I don't need to bring my grandmother or my mother from the village to Lagos when they have medical issues. Carlo, the making of that was removed. Till today, nobody has raised that matter in Imo State. These are Nigerians. Medical doctors. Carlo, another example. The same group of guys decided if you if you watch Carlo, if you go to a wedding during Christmas from December 21st till 3rd, you will never get any room in the hotel. All the hotels are fully booked. Do you know those that book it? They are not prostitutes or people that want to. People live in hotels. From there, they will go to their villages because of insecurity. Some of these guys that are coming from Lagos, they are, they are coming with policemen that they will pay so much on security. Now, we raised an idea on how we can develop what we call diaspora city. The people that were supposed to build it was these HFP guys, the guys that built villages in Lagos and the Mayfair Garden. I took their MD, the Israelis, and their MD, Dele Martins, to my state more than four times. Carlo, what were they asking for? These guys, doctors, diasporas, we shared the idea with them. We developed a template, built 2,000 houses in a six bedroom duplexes. The three bedroom will stay on the first floor, the two bedroom will stay as a penthouse. It's going to be built like Banana Island. Excellently done. It will be managed for them. They come for Christmas. They stay in their penthouse. As they are going, the place will be turned into A, B, and B for them. Beautiful than any hotel in Owe. And people will gleefully pay it because of the, the secrecy and everything it provides. Government was supposed to bring nothing. Very simple. Provide the land. We are going to compensate the community. It was a amount to pay the community $2.9 billion so that they will be happy to release their land. If I tell you what stored that transaction, you will weep for my state. It was supposed to bring foreign direct investment of $300 million. The off-takers were there. The developers were there. The communities were willing to collect their compensation. But the public sector bureaucracy and greed. And that is why we say this thing. Look at the laws. If we don't amend the Land Use Act, and remove the kind of bureaucratic criminality. If you see today, once a governor becomes governor, the first thing he does is he calls for GIS document of the lands in his state capital. He will start looking for where to steal money. The whole essence of the Land Use Act was to empower governors under the military regime or whatever. So that if you want to take land to do hospital and schools, communities will be compensated. But today, Governors are using that law to collect land from communities to build their own private estates and do all manner of things, which is against the spirit of the framers of that law. So you see, this guy. Okay, look at what the young man. Look at what the man is saying. Take your investments out. If a Nigerian yeah. is telling you, Carlo, turn your naira to dollar and take to Ghana. What yeah. is sorry. the right for Nigeria? Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry to cut him. I have, I also have a small estate at Ikorodumigos. I wanted to sell two houses in within that estate to raise some fund for this uh, journey outside. I listed those houses when dollar, Canadian dollar was at 600. 
I listed one for 12 million outright because it's still a carcass. Now, after about six months, <laughs> that 12 million is that's supposed to be like uh, like 20, about $20,000 there about is now less than $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, I hear you guys, guys, no, guys. No, guys no, what, no. What, 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 what? What if I borrowed that money? Yeah, that I spent. Crazy. We're, we're getting to the end, doctor. I want to make sure I put all this in before I let you go. So, if someone is asking you on on DM, number one is Mister B willing to go into storage partnership? That's for you, doc. One, I willing to go to partnership on storage. Number two is asking what are the factors that hinder air shipping of agricultural products and number three is it profitable to go into this air shipping logistics for agriculture so number one are you willing to go into partnership on on not just on storage let me ask you for everyone for are you willing, do you do any partnership number one number two air transport logistics what are the issues if you're there real quick i want to get everyone that's here now to speak i have ibf farms david frank and all that to also speak so doc go ahead hey. Yes, we are willing to go into partnership as long as the person is not a voyager. What does that mean? What's voyager? No, voyager yeah, he, he, he had the story of the girl that Carl funded <laughs> almost about five billion from Facebook to do rice and grain storage. And oh, the yeah, I know. The money. Yeah, I, I mean, your, yeah. Your voyager girl, he didn't hear the story. Yeah, I know. And the, and, the, and the Chimak guy. Yes. So... We are we are willing to do such if the person is not a visa or chain mark, mm. and then the, the issue of um, uh, the problem we have is at our entry, entry and exit point. You know, like the person that spoke earlier, he mentioned look at if you go to most of the shops in England, most of the shops in the US, you will see Ghana yams. It will shock you that most of these yams are actually shipped from Nigeria to Ghana. They truck them to Ghana and then export them through Ghana. Mm. The first time that we wanted to export yam, the outside through Apapa, the yam, the yam was producing, um, it was at the port for almost three weeks because of the same bureaucratic bottlenecks. You know, so the challenge is not that we do not have capacity to produce things that, have been, that can be exported. The problem is, like Carlo will tell you, if I load my container of yam from Ohaji. By the time I move it from Ohaji to Lagos, the checkpoint say alone will have taken my profit. <laughs> I, I, I and did... then, and then the agents are the pot. By the time they are done with what they are, forget this cop. I just got her post. So, so I mean, so doc, I mean, it's it's clear that there was a report done that. Planes and ships leave Nigeria empty. That is a fact. And the answer is really that this logistics and the framework in Nigeria is poor. That's a simple answer. Because I want to get you to talk, just quickly allow other folks to speak. I have, I let me do, do go to IBF Farms, Frank, Marzi, I sent Blue, and then we'll call it an evening. IBF Farms, thanks for holding on. You'll be dropping off an on, but go ahead, sir. Ibrahim Manex, go ahead. IBF going once, IBF going twice. I said Frank. Frank, how you doing? Edge Euro Frank. Yeah, good evening, sir. How you doing? Go ahead. Very well, very well. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank you and everyone that has spoken so far. It has been an enlightening um, talk, although I joined it. Um, I'm looking to invest. My question is direction. I'm looking to invest in Nigerian stock exchange. Mm. And kind of like I live in Delta State. Mm. And I want to be able to like invest via my phone without going to a broker because mm. when I'm checking for brokers in Worry, they're located in a strategic location. Might me I live in the outskirts of Delta State. Mm. So I'm looking for like a recommendation if I can get like a third party app or a broker app where I can I can give you just I can give that real quick for you. So if you want you want to do um sec approved apps, I, I used an app before it was sec approved. I still use them, nothing wrong with them, but I won't recommend them online because now sec is doing registrations. But a sec approved app, I think there's bamboo, I think there's cowrie wise. Bamboo and cowrie wise. Let me see if, if you send me a DM I'll send I'll send to you bamboo cowrie wise. So those are sec approved apps, you download them on your phone. You fund your wallets and you can you can uh, buy. I know there was a con there, there was um what's their name? I know Rise has bought them, 
but so what, what was their name before? So that was their name before. Rice has bought them now, but they used to also they were also a sec approved. I think they were the first to even get a sec approval. So those two are, are, are right there for you, Frank. You can just download it and start to trade. Yeah. And 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 and, 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 and Frank, most of the stock stock brokers in Nigeria all have online trading apps. CSL, Arthur Stevens, IBTC, um, um, Afri Invest, they all have trading apps. So even if you go to Nigeria's Nigeria stockbroker site, Mary Step, you will still get, you can still buy and sell just downloading their app. So you don't have to really go and get an app per se. You can still also buy um, an app and all that. Yeah. So that helps. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. You much. All right. Mazi Ezewa, how are you doing, sir? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Carlo. Uh, firstly, I'd like to just uh, thank everybody that made it to this, uh, to this platform to share their wonderful experiences. Uh, I just have a couple of suggestions, but before I talk, I'd just like to address uh, Mr. Mill, um, the guy that does the um, bricklaying stuff. Uh, I mean, generally, I'm not an economist, but I know it's a bad idea to borrow money uh, for some kind of um, import and export business. I mean, given, given the um, um, economic crime we are facing currently in Nigeria, I mean, the fact that the dollar is currently losing value, I mean, the naira is currently losing value against the dollar, it wouldn't be uh, a wise decision to get Forex, I mean, foreign, foreign uh, currency, bring it back into Nigeria to do business with hopes of converting it to dollar. Do you understand? Uh, anybody that's going to invest in Nigeria for the diaspora, you should actually like, get that off your mind that you, at some point in the nearest future, converting your naira to dollar. If your investment or your business is going to involve being such, I would just advise you to not do that. Okay. Do not do that. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sorry to cut him. I want to, I want to let you know that I only use that as an example. And, no, no, I was to and, Mr. Mill. Mr. Mill. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you: All those multinationals that come into Nigeria to invest in one particular sector or the other. Where do you think they get their money from? Loan. It's not family inheritance. Loan. They get the right. And that, that is the reason they are living because they cannot convert their money back to the currency to go and pay back not. those big loans. All right. All right. Well, what, what, what was your question, Marzi? Really quick. Yeah, what, so what? My, not really a question actually uh, it's more of a question and a suggestion as well uh, it's just we you know we're talking about investment wealth creation and investment options right so um i mean i studied i studied in russia basically just to give you a brief history about me i studied in russia i currently live in the uk uh what i would say is this right we need to look towards majorly exporting stuffs do you understand exporting products I mean, yeah, uh, a couple of um, a couple of um, speakers in this group have already mentioned agriculture, which is one. But as we as we all know, insecurity is currently affecting that. And the next area I like us to focus on, or like us to think about, is mining. Uh, currently in Nigeria, the only people mining, majority of people mining in Nigeria currently are Chinese people, foreigners. You know what I mean? So if Mr. A in this group has one million, Mr. B has two million, Mr. Three, Mr. C has four million. Uh, it, I mean, we could all come together, like one way or another. Look for solid minerals, you know, solid minerals at at um, that you can actually venture in with a minimum amount to start off mining. And then, of course, when you know that when you do mine, the next thing you have to do, you have to export and bring in forex. So the only business I would advise any Nigerian looking for, looking looking to invest in Nigeria will be think towards something that you can actually export and in hard currency so that when you put in your money whether it's from the diaspora or whether it's within nigeria you know that what you're going to be paying is is uh is um what's called a foreign currency and from the state i'd just like to mention quickly that they are currently mining tin and lead at as in un- unrestricted unrestricted you know some of the some of the people, people engaging in these mining activities have no license you know and then it doesn't really take it doesn't really take much to start up even if you go to a the state governor for for a legitimate license, they would, they would issue the license without even wasting time. You understand? So let's look. Let's let's look what's mining. Yeah, agriculture is actually like another one, but insecurity is really really affecting it. I can guarantee you that when you when you get, get in, into mining, your business is more or less safe due to the fact that state, hmm. state government will be involved. Bro, to extent, right? Mas, Mas, yeah, I hear you, but I even think I even think mining attracts more insecurity than agriculture. 
mining is in Nigeria is a very very dangerous uh, business. Very very. Okay, I mean, depends, depends you, on the area. You, in the I, north, in the north, yeah, is 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 right. is in security in the north, but in the south, no. Okay, no worries. I hear you. Good call. Uh, we're going to have to do something on mining specifically on that um, for us to to actually capture that. But I think, guys, we are almost at the end. You know, Doctor, uh, you've, you've been here for nearly three hours. Good stamina. Uh, what are your closing thoughts as we wind down now? My closing thought is that we are not leaving Nigeria for anybody. And we are not walking away from here. We will fix this land. And that is the truth. You know, this issue of dollar, you know, losing value shouldn't have been so. I will take us back. From 1999... When Obasanjo became president, Obasanjo hated the worst Nigeria than Buhari or any other person. Exchange rate then was at what rate? Was about eighty-eight naira to one dollar. That was what Abacha left behind. When Obasanjo hired over to Yadua in 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 two thousand and seven, exchange rate was one twenty-four official. Black market was one twenty-six naira to a dollar. Lost almost about forty something naira to one dollar. Uh, Jonathan took over 124 black market uh, official rate 126 black market and left after how many years official market 197 black market 199 dollar to naira lost 78 naira to one dollar this madness we had today happened under Buhari Buhari totally destroyed the foundation of this country working with the very pliant and docile and compromised the mafia. In fact, this country was totally destroyed by Buhari, a mafia, and the political actors across board, not APC, not PDP. Because we were practically not producing enough dollar, enough things to export goods and services. Even the diaspora that was supposed that were even helping us stopped inflowing money, stopped coming because of insecurity. And the, 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 the Naira is losing value because we are not producing enough, we are not exporting enough to be able to earn enough dollar resources to take care of our imports. And we can only do this when we fix the foundation. We are not losing hope. Like I said, Abia State is giving me hope. LXOT is tackling the insecurity. And let me tell you this. Anybody waiting for the federal government to fix insecurity is deceiving you. P.W. was governor for eight years. For five years, Adam Brown was the most secure state. He did simple thing. 177 autonomous community, give me your best children. He provided them with trucks, with guns, with every community in Ambra was gated. And they chased away all the criminals, including even the kidnapper. They shifted him to Sestak in Lagos State. NXOT is adopting the same principle. And I want us not to lose hope. We will keep on investing. I am going back to Abia State to invest. And the promise we have made that over the next three to four years, we will invest not less than $2 billion into Abia State. Across the agri value chain. And I will come back to Carlos Twitter space to share the good news of the mega harvest and mega profit. Because we have a responsible governor who is willing to stake his life, stake everything, to ensure that he brings his people out of trouble. Go and watch. The only place you have his security now is part of Anambra and part of Abia that is collocated to Imo State. But LX Roti has nipped that part of Imo and Abia through Loba. If you go to Abia today, now go to Aba, the street lights are working. The roads are being done. Policies and programs are being put in place. And I'm very, very sure other state governors will keep on the We shall keep on talking. We shall keep on advising. We shall keep on begging. I am very, very sure. One day, God will touch them. They will restore this land. They will not give up. I am not taking my money to Ghana or to Liberia or to Sierra Leone. I will invest my money here in Nigeria. We will keep on sowing. Isaac came to sow in Jera. The first place he went to dig his well, they fought him. He lost his investment. He left there. The second place, they fought him. He left there. The third place, he had peace. He called it Reho At a time when everybody was doing jackpot, he sold in that land and he ripped 100 food, 10,000%. That will be our story in Niger State. 
I will mm-hmm. keep on as long as I have life in me. I will keep on investing in Nigeria. Okay. This country will be fixed, and we must fix it. Amen. All right, Doc has gone fully uh, motivational and spiritual, but he has backed it up with the economic. You have to invest where you know Nigeria is a fertile land. I endorse the sentiment a hundred percent. Thank you all for joining me this evening. Three hours spent talking about merit things about Nigeria. I appreciate you all. I can only say I wish you guys the very, very best uh, this coming week. Go out and make it happen. Thank you, Doc. Thank you to all the guests I've spoken. I appreciate you guys. I love you all. Bye.